We live on a beautiful vineyard. Ah. Uh, I know I'm not supposed to go up here. I'm meant to be going to the lake. Been in the family for generations. This is the center of our farm, but since we moved here, it hasn't worked like it used to. Security matters, Daddy says. I would like to go a different way to the to the lake. Midnight and I want to finish the game. This is an unnerving place. I had never been here when I was little. Nanny kept me well away from it. Uh, is this where the family members were buried? What is this place? This never used to be here. Another entrance, maybe? Thank you, Santo. I love you. What is going on here? What are the soldiers doing? It's dangerous, I know, but I want to follow them and see what's happening. Yeah, Joey, you did. It was really gross. God, the ball.
please, no. Lapo, my dear friend, what have they done to you? Your handkerchief was the symbol of what you believed in. At least that is left of you. Dear Julia, are you surprised that I've addressed this to you and don't think you're dead? Everyone calls you Martha now, right? I know you too well. I can never understand why no one else can ever tell you apart. Not even your own mother and father. Martha is gone and I cannot reconcile myself to you. Erschossen, du Idiot! Scheiße, Scheiße, Scheiße! Was machen wir jetzt? Sieh mal, was sie um ihren Hals hat. Sie ist eine von ihnen. Es musste getan werden. Sie ist die Tochter von General Erich K., du verdammter Trottel! Sie war die Freundin von diesem armen Kerl. Oh, verdammt, jetzt sind wir wirklich am Arsch! Scheiße, lass uns abhauen! Aber, aber sie lebt noch! Sie liegt im Sterben! Siehst du, wo du sie getroffen hast? Sie ist bestimmt schon tot. Wir müssen jetzt abhauen, sonst sind wir auch bald tot. I'm dying, I thought. But strangely enough, I wasn't afraid. In fact, I was almost relieved. When I returned, I found myself once again in the midst of a bad dream. One whose meaning I did not understand at the time. check the wrong answers just to make sure that there's not multiple right ones. Dude, uh...
fuck, dude. Uh, Two sisters were destined to die. Julia, the first sister, and Martha, the second. On Julia's day of departing, identical twins stood before me, impossible to tell apart. They questioned my presence, since they were still so young. Julia must come with me, I demanded. But they both claimed to be Martha. I explained that Martha's fate was soon to be the same, and their games were useless. I didn't have time for it. The war was keeping me busy. But they didn't concede, and instead kept insisting. Can we follow you together? No. Impossible. Are you sure Martha will die too? Nothing is certain in wartime. What if the wrong person went with you? Then you would have cheated death. One would die unjustly, and the other would simply be delaying her fate. They discussed amongst themselves, then hugged before one of them came forward. She stared in a determined, almost threatening manner. I guessed it was Martha sacrificing herself giving more time to her sister. But I stayed silent, not to reveal their failed deception. No one lies to the face of their own death. So I asked how their choice was reached. We do lots by throwing a medallion, she said quietly. They had trusted in fate. Oh, how naive they were. They knew fate plays by its own rules, which is true, but it is also my ally. Fate never would have allowed the wrong girl to follow me. In that case, my work was done. She must have been Julia. However, little to my knowledge at the time, that blasted medallion had the same name engraved on both sides. Martha's. So, my first assumption was correct. They were too damned smart, and had fooled both fate and me. One thing is for sure. I'll put things back where they belong. I will correct my ignorance and give fate back its blindfold. breathe.
The ceremony is today, so I need a suitable dress. What a small wardrobe. I would like to spend a moment with my sister, just me and her alone, before people arrive for the funeral and then... No, 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 my bag is not here. My diary. Lapo's letter. How are we alive? How is she? How is my daughter? Please, doctor. I'll be at day two tomorrow. It's a miracle she's alive, Eric. But she will be all right. People are poor. We're poor living in a house like this. When our dad's a general. The bullet passed right by her heart and exited her chest. Unbelievably, it missed her lungs, spine, and heart. She could have been paralyzed or died. But thankfully, she's fine. I examined her thoroughly. She didn't even lose that much blood. She was lucky. And you were lucky, so to speak. She was lucky that my wife went for a walk in the woods. Otherwise... Otherwise, she would have bled to death, yes. I don't know what to say. All of this, it's too much. This guy has a similar so accent to Kylox. and suffering. Nothing more. Don't worry, Eric. She's young, so she'll recover quickly. I'll be here all day anyway. Thank you, Doctor, for everything. Damn. Did Do that coach just kill with it? Me to pick my wife up from the cemetery? The funeral will start soon in the chapel. Of course not. Lead the way. You know, with all of these preparations for the funeral, Irina wants everything to be perfect. It's her way of coping. My eyes? <laughs> what did my eyes do? So she doesn't have to think about everything going on. She is a woman who has suffered so much. Maybe... Good night, Chase. They're hot, thanks. There's my bag, thank God. Everything's empty. Let's hope Lapo's letter is in there. Oh. Dear Julia, are you surprised that I've addressed this to you and don't think you're dead? Everyone calls you Martha now, right? I know you too well. I can never understand why no one else can ever tell you apart. Not even your own mother and father. Martha is gone, and I cannot reconcile myself to that fact. I have to stay hidden, and sadly I can't run to you. Even if I would love nothing more than to hold you tight and cry together. No words. I just want to be close to you. Can we meet in the barn tonight? I will try my best to be there around midnight. Don't be alarmed, but if things get ugly, please remember this number. 6934. He died. He knew he was in serious danger, but what about the letter? I had it in my hand when the soldiers ran off. Mummy found me, and if she's read it, well, she hates Lapo, and now she must know who I am. No, no, she probably would have left me there to die. She'd rather have no daughter than the wrong one. Before I passed out, I must have put it back in my bag. There is no other explanation. Now it is the life of her sister, Martha, that is in danger. The blow from the gunshot in her bag could have killed her. It is only by the grace of God that the girl is alive. The anti-fascist political motive appears to be the only reason behind the cowardly act. The New Zealand troops are advancing slowly. After the Battle of Port Giponsi, on the 18th, they are still far from the Tavernelli Val di Pisa. I thought we got killed by German, German soldiers. German resistance on the Tuscan hills has been exhausting for the invaders. July 19th. I retrieved the cameras at the lake, but I had convinced myself that I was the one who had hurt Martha. So much so that when I had the rolls with me on the way home, 
I found myself in another horrible dream. I don't even remember going to sleep. As soon as I woke up, I developed the film. The photos confirmed to me that my memory of that night was correct. It was a great relief. I have decided to go back to the lake in an attempt to communicate with the white lady. I know it's a crazy thought, but I can't get it out of my head. I need to know what happened to Martha, so I must pursue every possible avenue, even the path of insanity. darkness that brings uncertainty but there will be a guide something that can teach me something Is there a storyline where we don't die or where we don't get shot? Attempted murder in La Romola. After the murder of Julia Kay, today her twin sister is the victim of another attempted murder. The condition is of the young girl game. found by the German troops is no cause for concern. The political motive behind this is becoming all the more clear. But that's I... not what happened. It's all wrong. Mummy was the one who found me. The German soldiers shot me. I'm best to stay quiet. No one ever believes the truth. New ordinance ban on the use of bicycles. What? Over the last few days, cyclists have once again shot at members of the Italian armed forces and at civilians in the streets. The offenders will be punished in accordance with German martial law. Even in Florence, the war is beginning to be felt. Supplies are starting to run out. Bread may only last a few more days. Prices are rising dramatically. Meat can now be found for 100 to 140 lira per kilo. The gas has been cut and there How is How no much problem. is that money, chat? How much is that money? The Battle of Tuscany. German operations in the Livorno area. Extremely violent fighting in the streets of the city. Yeah, Jans are very contagious. Chat, how much is that money? Attempted murder in the Battle of Tuscany. German operations in the Livorno area. Extremely violent fighting in the streets of the city. I should pick up the phone but remain silent. If I let the caller speak first, I'll find out who it is. Hello? Ma'am? Can you hear me? Is there somebody there? Mr. Eric? Oh, it's the nanny. I can confide in her. Nanny? Hello, it's me. What? Hello? Oh my lord. I must be dreaming or something. No, Nanny, you're not dreaming. It's really me, it's Julia. Oh my god, Julia, my little sparrow. 
How wonderful. Sorry, but I thought you were dead. I... I saw you lying there dead. This brings me so much joy that... Actually, you must explain to me, my little sparrow, what is happening? I told Nanny everything that had happened. She was sad for Martha, of course, but very happy at the same time. I was the one she had a special bond with. I explained to her that I wanted to try and meet the White Lady, even if I knew it was a silly idea. But she didn't think I was a fool, quite the opposite. She explained to me what I should do in an attempt to meet her. It was complicated, I noted everything down carefully in my diary. Who knows, maybe she did it only to keep me occupied, while deciding what to do with me and who to warn. I won't ever know, though, because that very same day, a bomb struck the villa and she died. They all died. We should have been in that house ourselves, but instead, poor Nanny. Bye, Nanny. I love you. Goodbye, my darling. I thought I'd lost you. Be careful, my little sparrow. Is there lore to the sparrow thing, like a, like Italian lore? Now I know what must be done to meet the lady. Nanny has explained everything to me. I must try to meet her early in the morning when it me is foggy. Me not trying what to watch your other vain. stream? That's Wait, what, what do you mean? Says. This is what I need to do. One, I must reinvoke her love by putting one? her into contact with her lover. To do this, Nanny said to look for his grave in the woods, but there are so many. Daddy always said that infrared photos can see what the naked eye cannot. Maybe then they also see ghosts. There wouldn't be anything strange about that now, considering mm -hmm. I'm trying to contact one after Oh, all. did you find I'm me crazy. through that stream? Two, a part of me needs to enter her world. A Ugh. lock of hair would work, so I'll need scissors to cut some off. Three, I will need an object that connects her world to mine. I don't know what to do for this. Really? Thing. Hopefully you found me from that stream and then came it. here? Four. To communicate with her, I will need to use my tarot cards. I will meet with the lady on the island where her lover was executed. Oh, that's kind of cool. Only one divination per day let's go get the sister one done Martha was taken to the chapel for her funeral. I want to say goodbye to her alone before everyone arrives. Let's try this phone. This phone number combination. God fucking damn it, I have to check it myself? Six nine three four. 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 is dead. I am due- No, no. Don't talk. We don't need to know who you are. By calling this number, it means Lapo wanted you to complete his work. A telephone cable near the house of German General Erich K has to be cut. One goes to the house, but there's another cable we suspect is connected to a secret base. 
That is the one that has to be cut. If you see any German vehicles around, let us know immediately. We won't use this number anymore. It's dangerous. Use a telegraph. That will be safer. Thank you, you Lily. Otherwise, you'll have to come up with something. This is important. Frequency X. Before the message, telegraph town on fire to identify yourself. Long live the homeland. Long live the liberation. Should I sabotage the cable and become a spy? I don't know. My father is German. It would be like betraying him even though he himself hates this war. But what happened to Lapo and those guys? The Germans shot Did you. Save someone's life? Maybe I should try. Or maybe I can talk to Daddy about it. He may be able to advise me on what to do. I don't even know the first thing about all this. What were you thinking, Lapo? Chat, what are we doing? Chat, what are we doing? I say we help them because it sounds interesting. But what do you guys think? Yeah, you can tell you you can tell the dad about it. To cut the cable, I will need sharp scissors. Taylor scissors should be fine. Are My these... mother's Taylor scissors. Okay. Just had to make sure. We need it to be foggy. Hi, Amethyst. What the fuck? I don't think this is it. A German tank. I have to report its location via the telegraph hidden near the cowshed. Daddy probably asked for a garrison after all that has happened. I should report its location via this wire heads towards the house and then keeps going, so it must be the right one. Oh, wait, we were supposed to be able to choose. Now, all that remains is to go to the telegraph near the barns. I don't think that was the right one either, but it didn't let me cut the other one. Dumbass, you killed it.
Is that a sparrow? Poor little one. He's dead. Poor little guy. His place is by Martha's side. Nanny always calls me Little Sparrow. This is the part of me that died with Martha. It'll be safe next to her. Here, Martha. This is my heart. Carry it with you. I'm starting to understand how painful your condition must have been. Not being able to properly communicate with anyone is becoming increasingly difficult. I envied you, but I did not see your suffering. I did not understand your courage. I miss you so much, Martha. That's I'm not worthy oh, to dress fuck. in your clothes. Yet yeah, you do it anyways, you dumbass bitch. God damn. Always talking shit, bruh. No, we cut the right one because this is the one that goes to the house. The other one goes past the house. Oh, what I mean. Bitch ass cow. No, I'm not saying you're the f fucked one. Hi, Jen. They had generators in the 40s. They had electricity in the forties. Be hidden in one of these feed bins. Where do we get the key from? I have to start every message with the code word. I saw the tank on the road, and the road is near the house. I guess I have to communicate something like that. What did we have to do as the message chat? Something on fire? Village on fire? Town on fire? Was it town on fire? Town on fire. Tank closed house. Uh, tank. Um, beside house road. Is this good chat? Wait, okay, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Tank positioned near house. Road. Right?
And then I cut the line. I'll add over at the end to make it clear that I have finished. I'll add over at the end to make it clear. I that just I have did that. What? Damn it. I got the length of the sound wrong. Fuck. I'll try this word again from the beginning. Why didn't they just text each other, Omega Lol? What are they saying? Bro, just use words. Why the fuck are we beeping at each other? If they could figure out how to call each other, why couldn't they figure out how to like make a better method of texting? How? Chat, how, how, what? How do I do it, chat? It's dot, dot, dot. What? Can someone in chat help, please? Ch chat! Google it! S T E S N received S 
SRV. Where is SRV? Need. Okay. Received need defensive line Okay, wait. Wait, is it always wrong? Defensive line. Um, MPP. Map, LSC, leave, VCN, near, EDF, building, LNG, beside, FIU, River over and out. Received need line map near. Okay. Over and out. Wait. Wait. I did something wrong. What did I miss? Received need. Fuck! Defensive line map LSC VCN EDF uh, 
LNG FIU AR. You're asking me to find a map of the defensive line. There is one in my father's study. Yeah, but it's quicker to go by the alphabetized version. And then when you're my mother's study. God damn. I'm gonna go jerk my shit off. We're doing streaming this late? I still got 20 hours to go at least. Can we watch exclamation mark links and I'll think about it. I feel too far away. Is this game about it's a horror game? That's it. Hopefully the image comes out clearly. Now we're a fucking, what are those, tra what are traitors called in war? What is this thing that I'm doing called? There's a word for it. It's like a felony in the United States. What is it chat? Treason, yeah. But there's another thing. There's a type of thing we are. So we pretended to be our sister. Um, gotten shot and become a traitor all in the span of uh, a week. The print should be fine like this. You can see detail clearly. Not really, but okay. Leave the photo near the stream. What stream though, chat? Oh. But what number do I have to dial? Asylum. I have too much control over my future here. Bicycles are banned. My bike. The wheel is deflated as usual. A bicycle pump will solve this.
pretty sure I was supposed to take the, the bike here, but, you know, whatever. What the shit? According to Nanny, this was an old windmill. It has been abandoned for as long as I can remember. And it has Where always is the given me the creeps. Where is the windmill at? There we go. The photo is where they requested. Use the telegraph. I have placed the photo where requested, so I need to find the right words to communicate it. Oh, and of course, I need to remember the code word. Is it town on fire chat? No, no, this doesn't seem clear to me. I need to find the right words. Thank you, Carnival, for the follow. How are you today? Fuck, I have to translate again?
charm. They have worked out the position of the tank. I should confirm that I've understood their message with received. It's gonna kill the replay value, yeah. If I ever were to play this game again, I would completely skip this part. It's also really fucking boring to watch. I'll add over at the end to make Holy it I have finished. Okay, town. On fire. Received. Over. Oh my god, and I have to type it out. Don't worry, guys. I can do this. No, something's wrong. Better try again. Diva was my first main. I don't play Overwatch that much, but I thought it was a cute chair. Okay, we're gonna do this again. TRV, find ARM, weapons, cash, Near BSC Woods Over There's a weapons cache in the woods In my woods Okay, I will search for it Let's respond received again Dude This is this isn't even a part of the story anymore. It's not even a horror game. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Uh I wanna play the game. There needs to be a way to just...
Okay, so after I've been there, I will place a flag on the telephone pole near the house. They will then know that I have accomplished the task. Easy peasy. Man, what what happened to like I was afraid of animals when I was little. I never approached them alone. What happened to the whole my like the whole point of the story? This game is like not at all like it was before I went on this whole war route. Doesn't even feel like a horror game anymore. Oh, it's closed from the inside. How can I get in? Almost time to give my pillow some head. That, I'm taking that from you and I'm using it. I don't know another way in, bro. Expect me to find another way in. What? What? Are you from Florida? No, I live in Texas. Um, what are we Texan? How am I meant to get there, though? Do I have to take the boat? <laughs> I've never heard the Floridian... I've never heard people that before. Calling greeting among the younger crowds. I don't know, everyone says it. <sighs> My 
it be bedtime soon. this game to go at all. I thought it was a horror game and we're going and uh, rebelling against the German Empire. Um, Tunnel? Here. I wasn't there when I was younger, I'm sure of it. Who will? Hey, Joey. Hello? That's all you're getting, because I don't feel like warming up my girl face. It's awfully late. There's been a whole world underneath this. Thank you. This whole time. I'm gonna guess we need to go this way. Ah, uh, the maze segment. Make sure we don't hit- make sure we hit that two hour mark so we don't refund this shit. When was this place built? I didn't know it even existed. Is this not a part of the weapons cache quest? Mm, this place gives me the creeps. This must be a dormitory, but no one is here. Who knows why? This telephone doesn't work. Oh, it's probably because I cut that line. Dear Brunhilde, the Good heat night. is killing me. We have been trapped inside the tunnel. It seems that Command are preparing for something big, but they are not telling us what. The other day, we went out on patrol and accidentally shot a young girl. I will carry the weight of this guilt for the rest of my life. I love you always. The hope of seeing you again is what keeps me going. T. The soldier who shot me, he thinks I'm dead. I don't feel any resentment. We are all hurting so much.
This is a really weird progression of events. No, my nose is just bothering me. Like really bad. I'm back out again. I'm so confused at what I'm meant to do down here. I can't leave. Objective is just to find the weapons cache. Didn't I just go this direction? Well, shit. No map, no. Hi, Verisinal. That's just great. No, we've already been here. The makeup is starting to get really itchy and dry. No, we've already been here. So far, it seems like the goal is to just continuously go up, so. What kind of a plot twist? <laughs> yes, I'm a dude. That's my whole gig, is being a dude. Uh... Oh. Finally an exit. It looks like I'm back in the woods near the house. I need to find something to confirm that this is in the area. The message they mentioned using a flag. I will pull the... I need to find something to confirm that this is in the area. The message they mentioned using a flag. I need to find something to confirm that this is in the area. The message they mentioned using a flag. She's really repeating that. 
I need to find something Holy to fuck. That this is in the area. The message they mentioned using a flag. Not expecting that one. Yeah. What? What, dude? I need to find something to confirm that this is in the area. The message they mentioned using a flag. Is the flag in here? Oh, thanks. Thanks for Sinnoh. I appreciate it. Normally I'm half naked on stream showing my ass, but I'm just bored playing video games right now. This must be a dormitory, but no one is here. Who knows why? I already read that. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. I guess I have to just go back. Man, I want to be done with this quest line. I just want to go back to doing the actual main storyline. I need to find something to confirm that this is in the area. The message Damn. they mentioned using a flag. That's what I'm saying. Exclamation mark links. Or go to aspicycow.gay. We're going to have to go get the bicycle. I'm done with this shit. We're doing the bicycle. I'm tired of running around. Frantically. For hours on end. Fuck. Spicy content, perhaps. I'm about to just go to bed, goddamn. Okay. Find a pump. Where do you guys think a bike pump would be? I promise I'm not gay. It ain't gay if it's with the homies, man. I don't know what to tell you. Puppets I used to play with were made here. I never knew that when I was a child. They always told me that a fairy brought them. I didn't really believe them, but it was nice to think that. A tripod is necessary to take photos with long exposures. I have found what I need to take infrared photos. I need a bike pump. You know, there's probably a bike pump in my room or something like that. Something stupid like that. that. Raven is making a big fuss. Oh, now we have another quest. Find the Raven. Dude, now there's Maybe too many the objectives. Raven that killed that poor sparrow. I hate bullying, yet it seemed as if the raven wanted to bring the little bird back to life. <coughs> F 
follow the raven? Can I get my bike first? Oh yeah, there is a shed right here. Uh, it seems I'm forced to go on this quest line right now. Holy water. It's only water and yet there's something special about it. Commune of San Casciano, province of Florence, death certificate. From the register of death certificates. Objective updated. Okay, I'm going, I'm following the crow. The raven, rather. Why are we following it? Oh. It's the flag. The dress? It's made from the same fabric I found a shred of next to the lake. In fact, it is torn. It must be my mother's. My goodness. Relative to the average pace. I feel very behind right now. I started to suspect that Mummy could have been involved in Martha's murder. Lost in these thoughts, hours passed. And I completely forgot about the funeral. When I realized it was evening, they what were already the carrying the coffin towards the cemetery. She never loved me. I knew that well. But I would never have believed that. Had it been her, I struggled to believe it, but it made so much sense. At the lake, she must have thought Martha was me because she was convinced that I was dead. But why would she do that? When the funeral ended, I felt an irresistible urge to play. I loved music. I started playing without thinking about the possible consequences. I didn't care anymore. I needed to feel alive, to exist again. This story is really all over the place. I'm gonna be real with you guys. What's going on here? Julia? Is that you? No, it's not possible. Martha's never played. She's deaf, yet... No. This is madness. My God. So, Martha? I understand now. You can get all of the attention, right? You were jealous, weren't you? Because she was a wonderful girl and... And you're just a useless little slut. What the hell? How did you manage to convince her? I get it now. But she... She talked to me. I... I... No. It doesn't make sense. The mom did I will it? have you locked up in an asylum. You hear? That's enough. You will pay for what you've done, you cursed lunatic. Wait, what? They will torture you to reveal the monsters in your head. What? I'm so confused. I feel like I missed a bunch of the story, dude. Her words were as sharp as blades. I tried to tell her that it wasn't me. I showed her the photos I developed that proved my innocence. But she grew all the more angry, calling me crazy and then... She began to hit me with everything she had at hand. I closed my eyes as more darkness began to take over in me. Memories came flooding back. Not memories of actual past events, but more so of feelings. Feelings I had when I was little. They were scary, 
They were the fears of a little girl. Despite what had happened, I went walking in the woods early the next morning to meet the lady. The evening before, my father had tried desperately to console me. Talk to me, Julia. You know I love you. I just want to understand what happened. I am happy you are alive. Even if we have lost mother, your mother was just in shock. She didn't want to hurt you. The, the crow had to guide me. succeed in the end. I'm going to enjoy what I deserve, but uncertainty and resistance to change are making my life very difficult. No, they're turtle chips. They're just chocolate. I don't know what I'm hoping to find, but what else can I do? I will hope that Daddy, one of these graves is hiding. I'm not something. ready to go to bed. I hope that the infrared film will show me. Sorry. Pretending like I have a hot man doming me it makes me pretty horny, so. Wait, what? Wait, what? It says it's properly framed though. I said it was properly framed though. Oh. Too close. Am I done? Oh, daddy. Oh, sorry. Miss input, guys. Um, uh. I want something to drink. Um, 
Don't stop. I will. I will stop right now. Fuck you gonna do about it. Fuck you gonna do about it. Cope. Oh, daddy. That was what I was sound like if I was gay. What the fuck? Why is this naked ass man here? I've been searching for with the spirit of a prisoner just like the white lady he's trapped in this world but they can no longer meet one another evil is separating them I kind of want to jerk off why not dude like, I'm gonna jerk off my, I'm gonna jerk my shit I'm gonna stroke my shit right now under the desk right now I'll be drinking my shit under the desk right now. What is good, gang? I'm in love with you, Santo. Let's make out right now. to be the carpet why I don't have carpet in this room wait what else am I doing hold on what the fuck uh, find the current grave Wait, what? So, we know it's this one, but that wasn't. No way we dig this shit up. What the fuck? If I wear this, it should allow me to make contact with her. With this object, she'll have to hear me, I have no doubt. I'm missing the element that connects my world to that of the white lady. Oh, the lake. Now we're grave Robin. I know this Why didn't I think fucking, of this game's all over the place, dude. Sooner. The dress that I threw in the bushes that cursed day. First it's a it's horror game about our sister the dying. Days now. Then our mom's mm. killing people. Well, then fucking mine and hers. We're in the middle of World War II fucking committing treason on our country. And next thing you know, uh, we're fucking caching weapons, watching out for tanks and shit, spending 30 minutes typing out fucking Morse code, and then we're grave robbing, and then we're back on the, kind of on the topic of our sister, and we're playing music, and... Hi, Desu. And then my mom's calling me a slut, like, I don't understand. And now the, the boat's magically back. Hi, Desu. Are you still streaming? I'm doing a subathon, Desu. Ah, uh, you're right. I mean, I should be in bed by now, yeah, but... I'm playing games. That way, tomorrow, hopefully, I'm rejuvenated and can wear a bikini for a little bit.
The subathon might be over tomorrow, literally, like when I wake up. I'm kind of hoping it won't be because I kind of wanted to, uh, it to work out. Um, I kind of wanted to go to the full seven days, but at the same time, once it's over, I do get to take a break still, so. Wait, what are we doing again? The boat's fucking bat. Without all the necessary elements, there's no point traveling to the island. Wait, what? Well, how do I get my personal object? I thought I had to cut off my hair. My mother's tailor scissors. Cut off your hair. Oh. I thought it had to, I thought it had to be our hair. The lover's necklace. How do I cut off my hair though? Only one divination per day. Hi, Feisty. Is it actually a pearl necklace? In the jewelry box? Here it is. I hope it works. What is it? Well, I'm like missing parts of the story now. Now that I have everything I need to communicate with the lady, I can finally go to the island. Finally, after all this time, we're continuing on the main part of the plot. How many hours are we into this? We're about th four hours into this. Watch me drive this boat. Check me out. Check me out, Jake. Check me out. Check me out. Convenient. There's a dock right here. I was having fucking rust flashbacks being on that boat for so long. Fucking 10 minute ride the small oil rig to get fucked by an eight man. This is the tree the lover was hung from, according to the legend. Okay. Is that it? <laughs> the 
it's we t we done yet? But there's hidden film. A roll of film. It's the one that I was taking out of the camera just before I discovered Martha's body. It should contain shots from before that moment. With a bit of luck, one of the shots has captured the moment of Martha's murder. I will then finally have an answer. Was it really Mummy? M mommy. I will develop it as soon as I can. Mommy. But now it's time to speak with the white lady. Mommy. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I will wear her lover's cross to draw her to me. No, that is her. Oh. A lock of my hair. To enter into her world. I will use the tarot cards to communicate with her. The first ten will be used like I did with Nanny. Once two cards have been chosen, it should begin. Wow, they really like just really want to drag out the playtime here. You camouflage yourself in the woods to approach me. You blend in with the water to make yourself known. You wish to communicate with me through the energy of symbols. You use my pain to summon me. You are very bold. You call upon me for knowledge that I do not possess. For answers I do not have. I am only a vessel. Like water, like air. A vessel to move and breathe. It worked. Now I need to choose two cards. Here we go. The daughter, the house, the mother. The daughter comes from the mother's house, then makes herself a home and becomes a mother. This cycle is broken. To undo the knot, find the son. He is the original sin reflected on <sighs> you. The one who gave you the light wishes to take it back. She wants control. Bit so basically, bite, mommy did it. Crumbling your life. You have to stop. If my mom tried to kill me, I don't know what I'd do. Oh, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. You will no longer be able to tell light from darkness. In sorrow, the difference is so subtle. You uh -oh. are alone, and you will remain alone. Memories uh -oh. are abandoning you. They are your only true companions. Now uh -oh. they take the place of your happy childhood. And they may return to keep you coming. Do you always read the same cards every time, no matter who you are? Boobs. Boobs. Why do these readings keep getting worse? Part of our soul embraces the people we love. It is then torn away from us when these people disappear. The wound is deep and it cannot heal. Faith vacillates. Death causes fear. 
But the church is a safe place. It is home and mother to its children. Faith is the light. Do not lose it. Finding it again is almost impossible. I lost it in sorrow, and without time, I am lost in the dark. <sighs> you do not have control of yourself. Okay, that was uncalled for. There is a dark figure inside you. Man. The wounds are feeding it. It will do things you do not like. It will use your desires your guilt the dark yeah, this is getting a little too personal bro conscience. this is getting a little bit too personal <laughs> boobs holy shit look at those titties dude uh. i can sense that you want to know who did it but i do not have the answer you must find it yourself. Do not ever try to enter through the front door if you wish to reach the heart. Your twin sister might have the answer you are looking for. I thought her ass was dead. Even after death, we leave traces oh. of ourselves. That's my don't bad. We? Everything is indefinite if you look at the essence of things. Imagine loving your twin, your twin children so- Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck, man. Sure. Why is she trying to kill my ass? Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Me out. Oh, that's just a sky box. This is this Martha? This is us. <gasps> Speaking with the white lady confused me even more. But at least now I have this key. Yo, where'd the clothes come from? Pause. Now I know my ass was naked. July 16th. Dear sister, I entrust my secrets to this letter. If you are reading it, things have gone as I thought they might, and I am no longer there with you. First of all, I am not deaf, and I never was. 
Mother scared me when we were little, so I decided not to speak or listen anymore. It worked. In fact, Mother began to love me. They also found a scientific explanation for my deafness. Neurological damage caused by excessive pressure exerted by the twin during pregnancy progressively led to hearing loss. And like that, my decision was also transformed into a fault of yours. So I must put it right. Do I have any other secrets? Unfortunately, yes, but a letter is too cold for such matters. Now that you know that I can speak, please go to the dark room. I have a hidden recording. Listen to it and you will hear my voice. Looks like the white Farewell, lady clothes. Martha. Huh. Why all of this madness, Martha? What else have you been hiding from me? You deprived me of your voice for more than 15 years. I can't wait to hear it. So now. we're 15. Got it. They're rushed. This seems like a children's fever dream. Like one of those things that you just make up because you're going through trauma and your brain puts these weird things together that never happen because you've had so many traumatic experiences. Hi, I know that this will seem absurd, but this is me and this is my voice. This is just our voice actor. We are equals in this sense too. Well, it's obvious, really. I've basically always spoken and you were my voice. I'm going to meet my fate, so I don't want there to be any more secrets between us. baby we had sex and i never had the courage to tell you i was so afraid of hurting you i'm so ashamed and now how can i ever bring this child into the world the baby is starting to show could you tell that's why i'm no longer getting undressed in front of you but for how much longer can i hide it yesterday you asked me to go to the lake together early in the morning you the sleepyhead early I asked you to switch beds with me, like we used to when we were little girls. I got up at dawn and didn't wake you. I put on one of your dresses. What is next? No buttons are working. Oh, I put on one of your dresses. My bad. I wrote a card to mother telling her that it was you who was pregnant, not me, and to come and see at the lake. I left it on the desk in her room. Oopsies. Then I felt the need to talk to you and I remembered the recorder in the dark room. Everything you never had the courage to tell her. 
I will be your voice. I know how much she's made you suffer over the years. Unlike you, I remember all of the harm she has done to you, and it is my fault. Take my place, sister. You will live a better life, and I will be able to rest in peace, knowing that I at least try to put right what I have done wrong. I will go now. My last memory will be the image of you sleeping peacefully. Hi, Julia. I was upset. Unbelievably upset. July 16th, that cursed day. Martha didn't wake me up. No, she's not going to out us. Martha wasn't there and we were supposed to go to the lake together. She even made her bed, which was unusual. I thought Mother woke up early, despite her medication, and asked her to do something. I'll explain it, I'll explain it, I'll explain it. There was a dress missing from my wardrobe. It was late. Martha hadn't woken me up as we had agreed, and I always overslept. I simply decided to go out and take the photographs by myself without Martha. That's actually our dress. It was a foggy morning, but it was no longer dawn. It was a sign of something terrible. I'm focused on the game. My mother had killed her beloved Martha with her own hands. I had then taken her place, usurping the throne of her affection. She would have never forgiven me. I had real reason to be afraid. I searched for one of Daddy's pistols to defend myself. What a stupid little girl I was. In spite of everything, that roll of film still needed developing. Even if it didn't prove she was guilty. I also wanted to search for proof of Martha's pregnancy. Twenty first of July. Well, I thought Nothing it was death. suicide. They shot me in the back when I discovered his body. I thought I had hit rock bottom. These are soulless, empty days. After this so is, it's only been a events, week, bro. I finally managed to meet the white lady. Or so I believe. The line between reality and dreams is becoming less and less clear to me. I thought a lot about her words, but they didn't shed any light on my assumptions. They kept ringing in my mind. Maybe I will understand when the time comes. Now when the time I'm comes! Certain that it was Mummy who killed Martha. When she thought that she was me. Only a week ago, all of this would have seemed impossible. All of a week ago, your sister was still alive. So she can pay for what she has done. Dumbass, Martha. Don't you know abortions exist? care about what people think. Or fear will prevent me from facing the music. The 
it will be very difficult to recover from the mental collapse. Destiny is inevitable. The end waits for us. This is the civilization that our comrades are proposing. General Edik K. So what I'm saying, New rules Thunder. On curfew and women's behavior. German command of S. Vincenzo Atori. Telephone number 1185. Four hundred ISO film. It comes into its own shooting clouds and indoors. When it's not too sunny outside, the two hundred ISO film works well. Twenty five ISO film. When the sun is high in the sky, it's perfect. I can't I can't believe they had chairs in nineteen forty four. Have a good day. Another telegram of condolence. Isn't it a bit late? The New Zealanders conquer Tavernelli in the eastern sector of the battlefront. The troops of the second New Zealand division, British Eighth Corps. My cam was fourteen thousand. The sixth South African armored division okay. advances on the Thought heights near Greve. People. Conquering the peaks of the Domini and Philly Mountains. The 4th Division reaches San Giovanni. Bombings. Damage caused by the bombings between Florence and Siena continues to increase. After the disaster at Poggibonsi, rubble and power cuts are the order of the day. Attack on Hitler. After an attack carried out by a group of traitors, Hitler's words are, In having escaped, I see a sign of the duty incumbent on me to continue my work. Sabotage of the phone lines that was in us. Mola. Telephone cables have been cut, causing danger to general safety. Any damage to the information service facilities is punishable by death. That was us. Dear Mrs. Irene K, following your call, we have received a telegram from Dr. D. Your request has been accepted. As soon as the police station issues authorization, we will send for the girl. While we wait, to avoid the girl taking any extreme actions, as per the fears you have expressed, we ask that you trust in the advice of her treating physician. I thank you for your generous and charitable donation to our institution. Director S. Volterra Psychiatric Hospital, telephone uh -oh. 0782. Now that she has discovered everything, she wants to lock me up in an asylum. Or maybe even worse, she wants to kill me and have everyone believe it was suicide. She is preparing all the finer details. Hello, we recently requested the admission of Julia Kay to the hospital. I just wanted to know whether it would be possible to cancel the request. I'm sorry, but the request was issued by the municipality where you reside, madam. Any revocation of the request should be passed by them. Only they could decide whether to approve of the cancellation or not. Have you already received the telegram confirming that we have taken charge of the request? No, I haven't received any telegram. Then you must hurry. If you go to the town hall and discuss the issue with them, they can approve the cancellation. Thank you. Goodbye, madam. You fibber.
San Casciano Town Hall reception. With whom are you hoping to speak to? I would like information regarding a request for admission to Volterra Hospital. Please hold the line, madam. Uh, yes, hello? I would like some information regarding the request for admission of Julia Kay, my daughter, to Volterra Hospital. Oh, yes, Lord, thank the hospital you. confirmed recently that it will be sending its own staff to your house uh, for the uh, admission. The matter is no longer in our hands. Probably the wrong number. I've already called this number. What use would there be calling again? I lost. I'm losing chat. Go to the dark room now. Not when she's around. I must stay as far away from her as possible. I could go to the cemetery instead to find out whether Martha really was pregnant or not. Yeah, my psycho mother is um, winning. Hello, it's at NAK. Yeah? Yeah, and wh what do you want from me? I'm sorry to disturb you. I just wanted to know if I can come over to see you later today or tomorrow. Of course not. Do not come looking for me anymore. Stop bothering me, you bitch. He must be going crazy. I don't believe for one second that Mummy would let him treat her this way. Sheer madness. I've already called this number. What use would there be calling again? I don't know what to do. Where is the cemetery at? Probably Thunder. I'm literally fucked. Hmm. 
Well, how do we get to the cemetery? No, it, it shouldn't be. And it would be marked on the map, right? I feel like it'd be marked on the map. Where would the pump be at for the bike? Hi, Gregor. Maybe we just keep calling numbers until something happens. whether there has been any development on the investigation into the murder of Julia Kay. Wait a moment, please. Who's calling? I am Renee Kay, Julia Kay's mother. Mrs Kay, forgive me. I didn't recognise your voice. Unfortunately, I don't have any real news. We are following up on some suspects. We assume we're with the boy who was killed in the woods outside your house. They seem to be planning something else. But your husband is probably the best person to ask about that. I mean, I don't know what to do. Commune of San Casciano. Province of Florence. Death certificate. From the register of death certificates of this commune, number 174. Part 3. Series 12 of the year 1944. Yeah, I know. There is a list of numbers, but none of them seem useful at all right now. And I haven't a clue where the cemetery is because it's not marked on the map. I think it's right here. We'll go to where I think the cemetery might be. I did really want to see if I could find that bike pump though. I don't know where you'd keep a bike pump. Is the issue. Nets for catching butterflies, poor creatures. I had a so shed? much fun with them. We don't have a shed. And I'm also missing a key. This box is apparently locked again. Nanny will be visiting me soon. I thought she fucking died. Donatello.
Yeah, it got very confusing. I may have made a mistake, but I can try again. me father it's julia k you know what's happened right i know everything julia now calm down you can talk to me whenever you want come see me at the church in town i already called the the church i already called the the cemetery and they hung up on me and i can't call them again The church should have cemetery. Are you sure? Well, I would like to find the bicycle pump. Mummy's family coat of arms. During deep winter, I would go to sleep snuggled by the fire and Nanny would get angry. Do you want to turn into a piece of charcoal, Julia? I mean, last place I under check would be out here or just in the shed. Where, oh, I can't. I can't go in there. So if the bike pumps in there, I can't use it. generator. It's very important these days as the power goes out often. They moved it here from our house. They had power in 1944? They had gas in 1944? They had houses in 1944? They had people in 1944. Dear Julia, are you surprised that I've addressed this to you? What the fuck? There are, but you can't use them. Martha is in the family crypt. That place is scary. I don't remember, but, but Nanny told me we used to go there when we were kids to see who was brave enough to go down the stairs. No one would ever go further than the first two steps. Now Martha's down there, alone, in the dark. She must be frightened. It's really not like straightforward at all that this is where she'd be.
The crypt is here. Not now. Let's hope the caretaker isn't around. That man gives me the creeps. This door is locked, but I must get in. Maybe oh I can find wow! Here to break the lock. I wonder. I wonder if it's. I wonder if it's the thing that I tried to pick up when I first walked in, but couldn't. Gotta get the extra playtime, guys. <laughs> These are perfect for breaking the lock. I should hurry before the caretaker comes back. family crypt is locked. The key must be in the caretaker's hut, as always. Enough. I can't go on like this any longer. I can't go on pretending nothing happened. My family was slaughtered by these dirty Nazis. My daughter wasn't even buried and I had to bury that half-blood instead. An Italian family that got cozy with the dirty Germans. Bastards, that's what they are. Hi, Flag what Squid! What to do with my life now? I want to end it, but not without taking a few Germans down with me. You won't see me anymore. But you will hear about me. Long live the resistance. Viva Italia. Oh my gosh, Squid, you're so hot for following. I literally just came thinking about it. Everyone takes a side. I find myself siding with my family, but I'm not sure whether it is right. Instructions for the automatic telephone machine. For example, if you wish to call the number 0573, Pick up the telephone from the hook and bring the receiver to your ear. No. You will hear a continuous tone. Firstly, place your index finger in the hole displaying the number zero. Turn the disc clockwise until it stops. Let the disc return freely to its resting position. Why was Repeat the same steps for the numbers five, seven, three. I can see why we were scared as children. It's a rather gloomy place. May God forgive me for what I'm about to do. I also pray that you, Martha, will forgive me. What? What to do? Duh.
Oh, dear God! Chat, look away! I didn't even click it, dude! No way, guys, I'm gonna put the labels on the stream! Stop! <clears throat> um, let me just, uh... Violent and graphic descriptions and sexual themes. There we go. Now, now we're within the refines of TOS. <clears throat> what? Ah! This doesn't prove anything. You're doing it all wrong. You're doing it all wrong! There's no baby inside, we did it all for nothing. Stop! Oh, yeah, this is one way. Ha Martha was pregnant. Pregnant with a deformed fetus with two heads. Twins again. They always said that it ran in the family. I was all the more shocked. I was uh -huh. doing things that I had never done before. I do not know what force was moving me. I became unstoppable. I decided to photograph the horror as evidence to show my mother and to everyone. Who knows why? This does not prove your innocence, pal. I told you she could have gotten an abortion. Enough now. I will torture you no longer. I will come back to fix you and I will stay and take care of you. We will spend so much time together. What? I love you, Martha. Doctor, I must thank you for your help. I wouldn't know what to do without you. Even our own dear Donatilio seems to not understand the situation. Irena, please, consider the idea of leaving Italy as your husband suggested. It would be better for everyone, especially for the girl. I fear that nothing will make her better. Her father doesn't want to accept it. I believe that hope is long gone. I agree. But in Germany, there are better treatments in specialized clinics. The asylum is a temporary solution, just to ensure that she doesn't do anything foolish. But it's a nightmarish place. You know that all too well. You cannot possibly want this for your daughter. Of course I don't. But what can I do? She is a danger to herself, to us, to everyone. One of Eric's guns has also disappeared. She must have taken it. Who else could it have been? I am so scared, Doctor. I cannot wait any longer. Also, you know what they think of Italians in Germany, don't you? But you would be with Erich, an esteemed general. Everyone will respect you. That cursed girl. Where could she be? Let's hope she doesn't play any more foolish stunts. I'll wait for her here. 
In the cellar. Sooner or later, she'll go to the dark room. That's for sure. I would gladly stay and keep an eye on her. But I must rush to town to organize the last few things for her hospitalization. Thank you, Doctor. Don't worry. We'll see you later. She's sleeping. I must take advantage of this. I will make her talk. She will reveal the truth out of fear. She thinks I can be silenced by calling me crazy. But unbeknownst to her, I will record everything. Everyone will know what you have done to your own daughter. I would make too much noise and wake her up. I would make too much noise and wake her up. Now I will wake her up and she will confess. You can bet on it. What are you doing, my daughter? Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot mummy. It wasn't me. <laughs> Dear God, what have I done? She forced me. She killed Martha. But who in the world will believe me now? They will take me to the mental asylum. Those rolls of film are my only hope. I ain't did that. I'm gonna be real with you. So that's who had the keys to my childhood bedroom. I could have guessed. Girl, just run, man. Walk across the... My God. Sooner or later, more bombs will land here. Then everything will come to an end. Damn, the power is out. It's impossible to develop that roll of film now. At least now I finally have the keys to my old room. But why was it locked in the first place? You just killed your mom. Finally, I can enter my room. It's like being a child all over again. I used to play with the puppets by reenacting what was happening in my life. To clear my mind. I want to do it again. At the beginning of any puppet act, there was always the legend of the white No, lady. I'm just going to bed over this. Otherwise, the scenes I was reenacting were worthless. According to an ancient legend, the lakes of the area are haunted by the spirit of a young woman, who was killed by the man she loved. A lover's nightly tryst by the lake. So much hope and desire, but death, not love, was awaiting her. What 
a beautiful moon tonight. My love is not here yet. I'll wait. You're here at last. What's going on? Why are you acting weird? You cheated on me! I would never do that! I love you! I love you too much. The thought of you with another drives me insane. That's why you have to die. What did I do to you? In despair, the man confessed he had killed her out of jealousy. They searched everywhere, but the girl's body was never found. Since then, her spirit, known as the White Lady, Good morning, takes Salinga. the life of a young woman whenever events take her back to that sad day. Now I can begin. First of all, let's clarify what happened the night before the cursed 16th of July. Dad says we're losing. What will happen if we do? Will we go to Germany? I'm so caught up in the story right now. Do you want to come with me to the lake tomorrow? I want to take some photos. Let's go at dawn. Mummy sleeps heavily. You anyway. can alter the story you with the puppets. Been taking that medicine.
Wake me up. Sure, great idea. Yes, it happened like this. Then in the morning, Martha went to the lake pretending to be me to show her pregnancy. She knew Mother was going to follow her down. Now I can only guess what happened when they met at the lake. Take off your clothes. I want to see your shame. It seems too obvious to me that this can't have happened. Oh, you actually have to make it correct. Oh, she's naked now. So you are pregnant. Your sister was right. <laughs> Undress and get into the water. <laughs> I want to... I want to see this option. Get undressed, mommy. Huh. <laughs> Mother, <laughs> she's naked. Definitely didn't happen. Martha had a scar on her forehead. What? How did she get that? I just wanted to see the mom naked. <laughs> the undress animations take so long. <laughs> uh, well, now I'm, now the delusions of my mind are taking over. Pregnant. Your sister was right. Oh, well, at least I had fun. <laughs> Why are we getting back to undressing and being in the water? <laughs> Why are we naked again? You're shameless. 
A soft. No, 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 it, it, it didn't happen that way. Oh my Mother god! <laughs> Just let me go. Okay. <laughs> It won't let me just kill Martha. It's so difficult. You have to like do the pattern correctly. So you are pregnant. Your sister was right. Dude. Uh. Out of the water. It could have gone more or less like this. I will never know exactly what happened, but I think I have an idea. And after everything, I shot my mother. No, 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 I didn't shoot. What actually happened? It is all in my mind, but I can remember. I know I can. Um, I most definitely did shoot. Alarm. Oh dear God. A small leg. And another little arm. Oh dear God. Another small leg. Oh look, only the head is left. I was under the bridge, but but it was just a game. This, however, is not a game. I was just playing. It's just a bad joke. Under the bridge, the church, the town. Speak, the white lady.
Power is back. Now I can develop the role and hopefully have my questions answered. That I'm saying thunder. I have a feeling that when we develop this film, it's not going to be the answer that we want. This is just the reality that we made up. God, so it's true. I killed my sister. I did everything to hide the truth. Then I killed my mother to rid myself of the guilt. But she was nasty and everything was her fault. God, what does that make me? I don't deserve to live a second longer. Maybe I will see her again and I can try and ask for her forgiveness. But if there is nothing after death, at least I will be free from this suffering. I know it's not right, but I can't do this anymore. I fired instinctively at that soldier, hitting him right in the head, but it was not a good idea. He obviously didn't come alone. When the others came in, I closed my eyes. I heard a lot of commotion and then felt a sharp pain in the stomach. They were kicking me while another tried in vain to convince himself that the soldier on the ground was still alive. They hit me in the ribs, the back, the stomach. I couldn't breathe and at the same time I felt the need to vomit. They were ordered to put me on a seat. They bound me up so tightly that I couldn't feel my hands or feet. On 
the seat next to me was my father. He was breathing, but he appeared to be unconscious. The guy in charge started asking me questions. He kept hitting me in the face and head with some kind of short cane. It was so violent I thought my skull would crack open. All I could taste in my mouth was blood and broken teeth. I ran my tongue across my teeth, thinking to myself that I'd never be able to smile again. A frivolous thought, perhaps, but a painful one nonetheless. Part of my top lip was cut open and was hanging down. I foolishly tried to put it back in place using my tongue and lower lip. I threw up. They forced me to confess that my father had been carrying out all kinds of activity within the German army. Of course, I didn't know anything about it, so I tried to explain. But those punches... I would have done whatever it took to stop them. Whatever it took. Just after I told them what they wanted to hear, the general said, all it took were two slaps and you sold out your father, you German whore. Then he ordered my father to be executed. It took less than a moment. He didn't even move. He pointed to one of the soldiers and then he pointed to me. My time had come. I assume when we shoot... They left except for the soldier who had I assume if we were to shoot ourselves, the gun wouldn't go off. I wanted to die, but not like that terror engulfed me. I could almost hear the sound of my body evacuating. I had the gun pointed to my forehead. I couldn't look at his face. I stank. I felt indecent. Then he moved the gun on purpose and shot without hitting me. He had taken pity on me. It must have been my fate not to die. He quickly cut the ropes and pushed me to the ground, saying out loud, It's done. The German whore has been dealt with. I was left motionless on the ground. He left, and I fainted again. When I came around, I did not know what to do. I was completely empty and felt pain everywhere. Everyone was dead. I was now alone in the world. I felt a desire to hear their voices one last time on Daddy's recorder in the dark room, provided the soldiers hadn't destroyed it, that is. What are you doing, my 
my daughter. Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot Mummy. It wasn't me. I didn't know who I was anymore. Everything had fallen apart. I was afraid of myself. My God, it was terrible. I had always been convinced that I was too good for myself, but then... I had become my own enemy. I was the danger. What should I have done? I thought about the puppet theatre in my old room. There I could find something in myself, perhaps. So I rushed to go play with it again. Mummy nearly died giving birth to me. This is what remains in my memory of my mother's, nanny's, and father's stories. I remember little to nothing of my childhood at home. I have to try, though. Maybe the important events I should know are right there. How are you, madam? I feel a sharp pain. Do you need anything? I can't move. I'm too sick. I can't move. I'm too sick. I can feel it. The time has come. I'm so enveloped in this story. Everything it's so dark and confusing and... Help! Something is wrong! Eric, help! Irene is not well! How are you, honey? I'm getting weaker and weaker. Doctor, hurry! Arena is sick! This reminds me of Johnny Depp's Willy Wonka remake. Why does the doctor kind of look like... Worry, Irene. The Why pain the... you feel is natural. Why does the doctor kind of <sighs> push, Irene? Push. Um, this doesn't line up with history. <laughs> oh 
Why does the doctor kind of... Where's our twin sister? The baby is born. I feel sick. I feel myself wasting away. It's going to be okay. Wait, did Martha, did Martha never exist in this story? Poor mummy. She has suffered so much. I have hurt her so much. Ever since I was born. Wait. Uh... <laughs> what? Mommy, I'm hungry. No, it's not meal time, you little nuisance. Mummy, I'm thirsty. You just had a drink, whiner. I'm sleepy. You can't sleep now. Mummy, I have to pee. That's enough. Go to your room. Properly this time. Sorry, it was an accident, Mummy. Please don't hit me. Sorry, it was an accident, Mummy. Please don't hit me. Dum. This is just a game. Is it only a game? I believe the white lady said that my lost memories would return in the place of my happy childhood. This is the only place I have ever been truly happy. Are these my memories then? Is this actually my life? to play with your sister? Julia, play with your sister. Can we play patty cake? 
Scotty Basox gifted a tier 1 sub to Ristia. They have given two gift subs in the channel. Thank you for the gifted sub, Scotty. Hold on, I'm trying to piece together this. I love you, mommy. What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? I don't believe you. I saw that. You think you're so smart. You're too good, Martha. It's not your fault. I've seen it all. Don't worry, honey. I will beat manners into you, you stupid little girl. Come with me now. Sorry, Mummy. I'm so sorry. Come with me. Put you in your place, girl. Sorry, Mummy. I won't do it anymore. I promise. Too late. These false tears won't help you. you want to bark leave my dog alone there's no point screaming stupid girl no mummy please you're insane I'm just gonna, I should have just watched a game theory video on this. Sure. Now I'll show you how insane Interesting game, I am. yeah, between. Help, this is Help. fucked up. Not, not the whole cutting the fetus out of our dead sister's body, murdering our, murdering our sister. Uh, that's not the fucked up part. Our sister cheating on us and getting pregnant with our boyfriend. Uh, um, murdering our mom and decapitating her and cutting off all her limbs. That's not the fucked up part. 
cutting off our sister's face and wearing it isn't that that this this is what crosses the line Pup, puppets cooking screaming won't work your father is not here like usual eat it beginning to remember but I was so scared to remember too much especially all at once I didn't have time to guess exactly what happened it was making me too upset pulling out those memories was like trying to pull out a tooth on your own almost impossible and far too painful the white lady told me that the church is a safe place and home to its children Donatilio, my priest I have to talk to him I have to call him on the telephone. This is so... I'm like, I'm so... Dude, I don't even know what I'm playing anymore, man. Don Atilio speaking. Who is it? Father, help me. They're all dead. Daddy, Mummy, everyone. Julia, come to me immediately. Don't stay alone. It's dangerous. Come to town. You can stay here with me and we can talk about everything. Okay? Okay, Father. But first I want to play with my puppets for a while. Julia, don't be silly. Come to church right away. Well, at first it was really simple. Martha was dead. But at this point, between committing treason and Martha probably not even being a person at all, She was dead from the beginning. Well, yeah. Where is the church? going to play with puppets chat we're gonna play with puppets it automatically gave us the pump for the bike
Um, so you're telling me it gets worse? Those boys, they had all been killed and it was my fault. What they were boys? My age, and a few of them were our friends. What? I didn't think it would go like that, but wasn't it obvious, really? What was I actually expecting? I felt like a coward. But what could I have done? Should I have betrayed my father? I loved my father, but I also loved my friend Lapo. Which side was I on? I just listened to my heart. I thought it was the right thing to do. But instead, it was the worst thing I could have done. Where is the puppet theater? I didn't go anywhere near the soldiers. Germans or allies. They had all caused me harm. I didn't want to approach anyone. For any reason. This is fine if you have tags. It's it's a new Once thing I they did. Once I crossed that threshold, I completely lost touch with reality. Everyone around me had died while I survived everything. I don't remember how things went. I just remember a big light and then photographs were being taken of me. There was a man dressed in white, a doctor I presume. He was asking me questions, but I didn't understand what he was actually asking me. He wrote something on a piece of paper and then two nurses led me away. I was in the mental asylum. Some women were talking to themselves. Others cried. Some were even covered in their own filth. Others were violent and tried to hurt themselves any way possible. There was this one young woman who would pleasure herself all day long, incessantly, to the point where she would bleed. So they would tie her down to the bed, screaming, cursing and talking gibberish for days on end. Once her wounds had healed and she was untied, she would just start again. That woman was me. They started to give me injections. What they gave me made my whole body shake. I broke my vertebrae and an ankle. I think it was called cardiazol or something like that. My body was like a fire that didn't want to be put out. When it appeared to be quenched, it would come back, even stronger than before. In the end, though, they won. I stopped screaming and masturbating. I stopped thinking. There was no longer any need for therapy. Something inside of me had died. But nevertheless, I insisted on carrying along this painful journey. I was stronger than I could ever have imagined. I'm st I can't move, dude. I, is, this, is this how I broke the game? We went this whole time with no problems, but this is it? Th this is it. This is such a foul fucking game. Whoever made this game needs serious help. Surely you can get out. Surely I cannot.
Twitch. Why? why? Like, I, where? Like, I don't. Like, I just. I really don't understand. Like, where the even the dots? Like, how did? Like, why was the masturbation part included? In, and what value did that add to the story? Oh, I can move now. Where should I move to? There is no place to go but this direction. I think the people that made the game just really liked the kinky aspect of mentally insane women, I guess. This is the first time... Oh, it's a mirror. Is this the part where we start harming ourselves? In a time of agony, I guess, but why? But I, like, I don't understand, whatever. Who are you? Wait, wait. I want answers. Don't go away. Talk to me about Martha, please. She's speaking in sign language. Dude, I don't fucking know. Is Martha dead? Are we Martha? Does Martha even exist? Martha does not exist. She never existed. She's just a figment of my imagination. Impossible. I remember her. I loved her. In some respect, Martha does exist. She is within me. Part of me is Martha, and another part is Julia. It's extremely painful. And Mother? Is she alive? Mummy is dead. Nobody knows that better than I do, unfortunately. It's useless to try and deceive ourselves. Did I do what I think I've done? Yes, damn it. It really happened. I cut her into pieces and buried her under the bridge. God, all that blood. My God, I knew it. What about Daddy? The soldiers, did that really happen? It happened. He was shot right in front of me. Fear, pain, shame. I can't remove it. I cannot relive it either. Unfortunately, I knew that already. What about Nanny? I haven't seen Nanny in so long. I don't know what could have happened to her. Who knows where she is, the poor thing. I'm afraid to ask about Lapo. <sighs> Lapo is dead. He was blown up by a landmine. He got into trouble and paid with his life. My dear friend, poor boy. Just as I remembered. Unfortunately, one last question. The pregnancy? I was pregnant, but then I had a miscarriage. So much blood that morning, and my 
mind decided that things had gone differently. Oh. Who knows what else I was hiding. That's enough now. All of these questions are pointless. None of these aren't make they? sense. It's all inside of us. We just need to turn the mirror. Is it not all just the reflection of an unknowable existence? Nothing. I want a game a theory picture. video. Ready for everything with open arms, even ready to kill. I assume so. Legs always ready to run. It's either that thunder or there is an answer, which is why we're going to watch a game theory video on it after this. The womb that conceived in sin. Lastly, the mind. To protect us, it has turned us into monsters. Either way, we cannot live like this, can we? I'll take care of it. I don't need to worry. I'll try to sleep if I can. I've got Chad, this. Chad, this might be bad. a sign to perhaps look away if on the 26th of July San Casciano was bombed and the church was destroyed but I was not there then I was already in the asylum. Once again, stubbornly, I was not dead. The bombs hadn't killed me and I had also survived myself. The most absurd test and the hardest thing. I like how that was the only warning. That was the, the only one with the warning. The war ended some time ago now, both out there and inside of me. I was on the wrong side of the gate but now I can turn the page. Life is opening its doors again, isn't it? If I hadn't been so lucky to survive myself, I would have thrown everything away. We think that danger is all around us, ready to attack. But the most devious and misleading dangers are the ones that are inside of us. They grow without us realizing. They make us suffer, remain confused, and remove our self-respect. I would have wanted to ask for help, but I was alone. This is my story. Thank you for being here, for listening to me. Now I'm ready to leave. How long will it take to get home?
Unfortunately, today it is possible to ask for help and receive a name. If we are alone, even if we are desperate, even if it feels like it, life doesn't make sense. If it feels like there's nothing left for us, it is only because we can no longer see it. There is always something to live for. Something great could be just around the corner. They're a uh, the psyop to live. Well, uh, I guess it's time to start watching that game theory video. The, the storyline doesn't make any sense. Eighty percent. What does that mean? I have, I have done a run through in about five and a half hours. Huh. So we can literally make the... Okay, so... Martha is dead game theory. Is there really no game theory video on Martha is dead? Martha is dead explained. What is the u unanimously decided upon Martha is dead video? There's really not many. Okay, most viewed one it is. That's what we're settle settling with, chat. Julia, it's only 40 minutes long. Twin sister of the recently deceased Martha, based in World War II era Italy, narrates their story and the horrifying surreal trauma they went through in the midst of war. The paranormal events Julia experiences makes her question her own sanity and her ability to differentiate between reality and fiction. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. This game was heavily suggested to me, so here we are. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers ahead. With that said, let's begin. Julia Kay introduces herself in a narrative style in an undisclosed location, explaining her story from childhood starting from summer of 1929 when Julia was sent off to stay with her have gotten into her mind. Going down to the hall, with her parents just leaving to prepare for the funeral, Julia picks up a newspaper, reading how the media is escalating Martha's death to advance their political propaganda. Julia Kay, a young woman from a respectable family, brutally murdered near her home. 
Carabinieri. After the death of Martha, unsurprisingly, she notices the door being locked, preventing her from leaving. Julia, being determined to find the cause of Martha's death, manages to find a way to leave the vein running through yet. On the nightstand, she finds the selfie photo she took of herself earlier, being in the picture frame Martha used to tell her to use, but with her picture being upside down. It's very rude, but I could pick up the phone and listen to their conversation. Good night, Santo. Sleep well. As the phone rings, intended for Irene, her mother, she picks up the other phone in her room, listening in to her and their priest's conversation, who discuss the death of Martha, whom everyone thinks is Julia, with the mother suspecting Lapo, the boy dating Julia, which the mother didn't approve of, and the priest believing the nanny must have been involved as she used tarot cards, which the priest thinks is sacrilege. This depicts how each individual is biased according to their their own perspective and belief system and how detrimentally judgmental they can get. A radio announcement then explains a new ordinance by the German government as the war is about to come to a bloody conclusion for people to lock themselves in their houses and not even look outside of the windows, as the German troops have orders to shoot at anyone in the streets or looking out of windows, believing that they could be snipers. Upstairs, she finds a note written by Martha in informing their mother about Julia being pregnant and to observe her when she takes a bath in the lake to witness her tummy growing, which shocks Julia reading it, saying that she's not pregnant. It seems as if Julia is still suffering from memory loss, being in a haze, not fully remembering what happened at the lake and many other times. A letter by the nanny reveals that she's in the luxurious villa they used to live in, with them moving into a smaller, more covert house which the nanny left in in order to stay safe from enemy forces of allies. She also finds a bottle of Pervitin lying around, which her mother takes too many of and too often, which makes Julia make a remark that Irene has become more agitated since taking them. Pervitin was a drug which in fact was an earlier version of crystal meth, which was widely used during World War II amongst German soldiers, which was said to be effective in increasing alertness and keeping the mood up, creating a sense of euphoria, allowing soldiers to perform even with little sleep. Therefore, Pervitin despite being good for certain situation, caused long-term addiction and other problems. As she goes to the developing room and develops the photos from that day, she sees that she was carrying Martha's body to the shore, I trying don't to save like... her, which makes her exhale in relief that the evidence matches her fuzzy memory the way this that works. she did not harm Martha. I don't like the way he talks. Julia then tells herself that she could maybe speak to the white lady of the lake to get some answers, asking who could have hurt Martha, even though it sounds silly. As Julia heads towards the lake, she notices a gunfight between partisans gun and German soldiers. Gunfight between partisans and German soldiers, stop, which she follows. She witnesses the dismembered corpse of Lapo lying on of the ground, Lapo. who seemingly stepped on a landmine, even though the town they are in isn't a battlefield and shouldn't have any landmines. He As has Julia a serious case of script a letter addressed to her by Lapo, explaining how she knows Julia is still alive and how he could easily differentiate between them. Nope. One of the German soldiers shoots Julia from the back, leading to her collapsing to the ground with life slowly leaving her body. The German soldiers stand next to her buddy, discussing how No, she because she's not on she the was medicine. One of the partisans, as she was wearing a Lapo scarf, which seemingly was a symbol of what they fought for, a symbol of freedom, portraying that Lapo. A symbol of freedom. Portray at last. Dude. I mean, I respect the 42 minute video. Lapo was a member. I, but like, I'd rather listen to. No, it's not <laughs> accent. It's because he's just reading a script. Uh, who else had this really bad? Um, what's their name? That one dude that did the, uh, Burger King foot lettuce thing? Yeah, the number 15 guy, he had it really bad, too.
His videos would be so much better if he just like... The soldiers quickly realize she was Edek's daughter, making them realize they're in big trouble, who quickly flee, running away from responsibility. When I returned, I found myself once again in the midst of a bad dream. One whose meaning I did not understand at the time. I just want an answer though. But all the highlights are just the gore parts. Like everyone just watched for the fucking gore. As Julia returned, she gave Lapo back as if he belonged to Martha with him dead now joining Martha in the lake. So Martha is real. According to his... Hi, Frank George. Okay, I'm done. I genuinely, I genuinely don't think there is an answer to this story. I think there's the obvious answer, which is Martha is real. Um, you either take the mom's side or our, our perspective side, and then that's your answer, and those are the straightforward ones, and then you can get into, like, the metaphorical shit all you want. Here, this is the EMS foot massager. EMS is electrical muscle stimulation. Well, I don't think there. It's a war soon enough, which makes the sisters have a quick discussion before one stepping forward, claiming to be Julia. He's just recapping the story. Martha truly existed, or at least she even okay. explains how to the fetus, displaying what a vivid imagination she pregnant in fact, but had a miscarriage, explained in the massive blood loss of Julia when woken up, with her own mind interpreting it as cutting herself open and removing the fetus, displaying what a wants her daughter back, seemingly knowing of the existence of Julia, and feeling responsible for her dissociative identity disorder. Okay, the hold on. who took the punishments. So there's, ag okay, his interpretation of the ending is actually that Martha never existed. Until she finally took over the entire body at the lake. This identity was created by Martha after experiencing the trauma under Irena's hands, who took the punishments in order for Martha not to suffer anymore. Martha pretending to be deaf, with Irene regretting her past mistakes as heard in the recording. She despises Martha's created identity, Julia, as she wants her daughter back, seemingly knowing of the existence of Julia and feeling responsible for her dissociative identity disorder. That's why Julia has memory lapses and blackouts, as other parts of her brain take over occasionally, being a fabricated and created identity by Martha. When Martha explains that she went to the lake to pretend to be Julia being pregnant, it all seemingly played out in her mind, with her wanting to fully kill Martha, the original owner and identity of the body. She even explains how the lake was hers, a place of solace and peace. Martha seemingly was pregnant in fact, but had a miscarriage, explained in the massive blood loss of Julia when woken up, with her own mind inter- Dude, I- uh, it's actually- uh... Interpreting it as cutting herself open and removing the fetus, displaying what a vivid imagination she had. The medallion they owned only had Martha's name engraved, explaining how only Martha truly existed, or at least was supposed to before Julia was born in her mind and made as her sister. That's why Death wanted to take Julia in the puppet show, the created identity that wasn't supposed to oh. exist, but accidentally took Martha. The face of Martha also shows facial scarring and broken teeth, depicting that she in fact was tortured and interrogated by the soldiers. Therefore, with the fuzzy mind okay. of Martha, unable to recall the memories and tell between reality and fiction, it's in a way left to the player's own interpretation. I believe everything happened according to what she experienced, with her father dying and she getting facial injuries after interrogations, she killing her own mother, with Lapo having had died, 
unclear if by stepping on mines or any other way. All of this combined with the trauma of war and the fear of not waking up the next day, Martha's mental health worsens, with her being hospitalized in an asylum to recover. After Irene witnesses how badly she hurts herself. That's why going to the church was coincided with her entering an imaginary world, explaining that pictures were being taken while she was taken to an asylum, depicting how her story was seemingly shared with the public and the press, for being the daughter of a German army general and killing her mother, being labeled as mentally insane, ending up in a mental asylum. The flashes of cameras depict how she became a subject of interest to media as well. Miraculously, she mentally recovers, with a doctor finally releasing her after a review, concluding that she's healthy, with Julia seemingly not present anymore. Or maybe Martha, or maybe even both. With a new identity, even possibly being born, as she did explain that a part of her died in the asylum, with Martha having had been murdered already, and Julia's life being taken by the puppet Martha. Something inside of me had died, but nevertheless I insisted on carrying along this painful journey. I was stronger than I could ever have imagined. What a tense and gripping story, even though fictional. I just can't help imagining that similar thing. See how much happened. better this guy talks when he's not reading a script? People in real life who went through a variety of traumas. I need to watch something lighter to clear my mind now, even though I really love the story. It's been your host, Star. Thanks for being here, folks. And I will see you on the next one. Unfortunately... It's really f***ing good. My boyfriend wanted- Waking up in a dirty nightclub toilet with the muffled music banging heavily from the outside of the door, the protagonist looks around, finding the word afraid etched on the wall. Okay. So basically, Martha... Only Martha. Martha gets beat. Then... Martha creates another identity of herself named Julia. Julia is the person taking all the abuse so that Martha can be happy. But Martha is just creating Julia because Martha has already been abused. Uh, and that's, that's kind of, I guess, how it went. I guess, kind of. Um, and then we're also committing treason. And there's also like... A side story. Um, if you have any, don't forget to remove the 18 plus tag. Um, let's go back to just chatting now. Faz, thanks for the follow. Um, anyways, I'm... I'm tired. I don't know. That was his depiction. Uh, that was one of the one of the better games I've played. Um, I would have loved like a a more you know detailed story, but whatever. I am now gonna be going to bed. Uh, the subathon ends in seventeen hours, assuming we don't get any more time added. Um, Maybe we luck out uh, and get more time added. Maybe we don't get any more time added. But the subathon will be ending uh, seven, in seven days tops regardless. Um, okay, well, there we, thank you for the 500 bitties. <laughs> that is another like six minutes, seven minutes, ten minutes, whatever. Thank you, Favor, for the follow. Uh, thank you, Faz, for the follow. Uh, and thank you for the 500 bitties. I appreciate it. Uh, I am going to go shower. You're just gonna leave us after that, <laughs> dude. I'm still putting the pieces together. I'm you're, I'm not gonna leave. Uh, I I I thought about bringing you guys to the shower with me yesterday and just showering on cam, but I don't know. I feel like that. <laughs> I feel like that that shouldn't be something I just do for the fun of it. Even though I kind of want to. Um. We'll think about it.
uh, for another time. I was just going to bikini shower, but I feel like I could like charge money for that, you know? And money's cool, so uh, let me see if I can pay my rent yet. Uh, it is now a day late to pay my rent. Um, so let's see if they finally po posted my rent for payment. I've been trying to pay it for the last week, and I cannot. I'm not going to go down to the office. Well, the thing is, is like, it says my, I, my rent isn't, like, they didn't, like, it says I have no rent, basically. It basically says I don't have to pay anything, is what it's saying. It's saying I literally have no, nothing to pay them. At all. But, um, you know. Yeah, maybe it's a Christmas gift. Um, I think I'm gonna go shower. Do you guys wanna watch any YouTube videos, perhaps? Any, any YouTube channel? The refreshed 2024 Model 3 is getting so close to being available in the United States. This picture of these refreshed Model 3s was taken outside the Cremont factory a couple days ago. And if you look closely, all of these Model 3s look like they're just pre-production ones, and that's because they are. This one in particular even has a build date of December 7th, which means they've been building these refresh Model 3s for a little while. You might notice that the trunk lids have the Made in Shanghai emblem on the left side, and that's probably just because they didn't want to have to make brand new trunk lids in Fremont, so they probably just shipped them over for their test cars. The refreshed Model 3 is rumored to be available to order sometime this month, with first deliveries beginning in March. The refreshed 2024 Model 3 wait, is getting so close to Wait, wait, order is sometime in when? This picture of these refreshed Model 3s was taken outside the Fremont factory a couple days ago. And if you look closely, all of these Model 3s look like they're just pre-production ones, and that's because they are. This one in particular even has a build date of December 7th, which means they've been building these refreshed Model 3s for a little while. You might notice that the trunk lids have the Made in Shanghai emblem on the left side, and that's probably just because they didn't want to have to make brand new trunk lids in Fremont, so they probably just shipped them over for their test cars. The refreshed Model 3 is rumored to be available to order sometime this month. With really? That's so exciting. Sometime this month? Tee-hee! Tee-hee! Hi, boob. Sometime this month, depending on the price, I mean, I mean, is it really debt if you're happy? Is it really debt if you're happy? You also have a Model 3 Feisty? My, what they change though, uh, it's just, it looks cooler. Uh, a lot of the changes are negative. The only thing I care about is the new performance is rumored to have, um, the same, like the same motor as the Model S Plaid does. And <laughs> I like fast things, so, you know. Question. Because I just have a, a base, I have a standard range plus because mine's 2019. And it's, it's, you know, not the fastest car. Well, then actually the model for their performance is cheaper than the standard or long range. Tax rebate. What the fuck is a tax rebate? Like the tax, the federal tax credit? Or is that something else? I thought they ended the tax credit, and I thought it wasn't available on the model th on the on the performance. Federal, yeah, I thought that wasn't on the performance. A new thing, like this, like this January new. Oh, the new Model Three performance qualifies for seventy five hundred tax. Wait, what the fuck? When did that happen? When did that happen? 
Why? Now the Model 3 Performance is one, like one of the cheapest fucking... Hold on, wait. Does that mean that the used prices have dropped? Model 3 Performance used. Um... Not really. Used near me. I can't trade in my car because I it's it's I just wrecked it, but um No, the use prices haven't changed at all. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I did not know that. I, I've been thinking about getting rid of my car for one with more range for a while now, uh, but I wrecked it and now I can no longer trade it in for a reasonable price. So I'm waiting for insurance to fix it, which is happening on January 8th. So we will see. Um, and then after it's fixed, if the, if the new Tesla is like reasonably priced, perhaps I can sell my car and look into changing to the new one. Depends on how fast the new ones are. Um, from what I've seen, the new ones are slower. Uh, but I don't know if that's just because you're at the moment. But I also want to stop renting first, so. It's a point of sale. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Or a Tesla battery, I don't know. Take a guess. Wait, really? When the, what, what? When did that happen? No waiting until tax season? Yeah, but that means that you're like gonna go ahead and buy yourself a... Today? Where? Nuh-uh, you're literally not right, I don't think. Wait, are you right? No, I don't want to, I don't want to get, I don't want to get a car that's going to be outdated in a month. Huh, I didn't know any of that. Webo, thanks for the follow. Okay, I want to go shower now. Can I go shower? I can't do shit. I got no bitches. Who are we watching on YouTube? What about Tuv? Okay. If you guys are watching Tuv, goodbye. I'm gonna go fucking shower. I tried shower. three different e-commerce platforms and none of them were working for me. But once I switched to- Shower stream, I wish, Carnival. I You're still here? YouTubers, you just, what? Have you been here all three hours? to allegations or accusations. And don't even get me started on Minecraft YouTubers. The fact that this meme exists just says enough. It is quite shameful that that is our stereotype. And trust me, this meme me started on minecraft youtubers the fact that this meme exists just says enough it is quite shameful that that is our stereotype and trust me it is very very weird and just unsettling seeing people comment i hope this certain youtuber never ends up insert most heinous action here just because so many other youtubers have ruined their reputations and there are a lot when i say a lot i mean a lot all right we're right back chat i'm gonna go i'm gonna go in this video whip it out in the shower and then we're gonna go to bed in the past 
past and i'll see you guys in the morning we're going a tier below that today we're going to be talking about youtubers who ruined their lives and also there's a chance this video might not be monetized the other one got demonetized and this is kind of like a sequel to that one so i quickly do want to say that if you want to support me your view is already enough for me so don't think you have to go out of your way to subscribe but a subscribe would be nice and a like would be cool too if you want to go the extra mile we do have slippers at earl doesn't exist.com look at that isn't he so cute they are amazing and will fit your foot size 8 to 12 men so sorry if you have a foot smaller than size 8 men's size but yeah they're super comfortable and i don't want the ad to go on too much but if you guys want to buy them they're at earl doesn't exist.com they support me directly yeah that's really all i wanted to say before we get into the serious topics of this video without further ado let's get started with the video dream dream real name clay who over the years has been an absolute force when it comes to minecraft content he's even been featured on forbes where they highlight his insane level of success as of november 2023 when the article was written, he had over 3 billion total views, 31 million subscribers, and a Guinness Book World Record for the most viewed Minecraft video gameplay on YouTube. They also generously point out that, I quote, at his height, Dream was bringing in 200 million views per month, outpacing even the 140 million users who play Minecraft every month. If you were on YouTube around 2020, which I'm gonna be pretty sure a lot of you were, you would remember that when Dream initially blew up, you could not get away from that dude. His videos would find you on recommended no matter what niche you were looking up. It was honestly quite admirable, like seeing someone go from almost zero to nothing in the matter of a few months. But this article failed to mention any sort of allegations against Dream. He's been accused of these things for a little over a year now. I'm talking about the grooming allegations which have severely weighed down his success. So what happened to this otherwise thriving YouTuber? Before I get into this, I gotta say that that it seems like dream has been accused of almost everything in the book there are hundreds of twitter threads explaining why dream is a horrible person and actually while this video was being made dream uploaded his long-awaited response video to his main channel so i'll try to summarize the allegations and his response as professionally as i can in this video but i wouldn't do that without advising you first to make sure you watch his video whenever you get the chance so when did this all start well it all began on october 13th 2022 when a burner account on twitter at burner 39413705 accused him of grooming and Philia. He was accused of grooming a 17 year old girl using different social media platforms and iMessage. Now, the thing is, these weren't just baseless claims that could be ignored. They were backed up by screenshots and screen recordings as, quote, evidence. And getting straight into the evidence, I'm not going to read everything word for word, by the way, I'll highlight a few curious ones. For instance, in the Twitter DMs, allegedly, Dream asked her, how old are you? Are you still in school? Then in a text message, he tells her, you should turn up come quarantine. To which she replies, nah, you probably got the Rona. I'll see you after quarantine. Which begs the question, why is Dream talking to a fan like that? Since he was inviting her over, it feels like a conversation that could have been headed elsewhere. More of the messages also prove this point. For example, in a text, he says, quarantine be bringing the horny out of everyone. What the Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that the girl in question is named Anastasia. Apparently, based on her claims, the messages took place in 2020 when she was 17 and Dream was 20. One of her tweets read, None of it is appropriate for a, quote, fan and influencer to be this close, especially since I was still 17 and in school and he knew that. It crosses the line when he's sending me his huge house slash inviting me. Now, that is obviously really concerning information. And this was back in 2020 when Dream was still a faceless YouTuber. I bring this up because Anastasia claimed that Dream only revealed his face because he was afraid that she would leak at first allegedly dream had revealed his face to her before his uh, YouTube face reveal. Anastasia's claims, while being accepted as true by many, were also met with doubt by some who thought the DMs were fake. But these doubts were allegedly debunked, for instance, in this Twitter thread by Sierra, who ties together the evidence that Dream's victims, Amanda and Anastasia, posted. Sierra shares a bit more screenshots of other people's interaction with the victim's account, Anastasia's friend, for instance. This was to prove that the screenshots were not faked. But screenshots are messy. Uh, anyone can inspect Element, anyone can Photoshop, and even when it comes to screen recordings, I'm pretty sure those could easily be faked too. But those are just my two cents. Um, let's keep going. Now, I said the name Amanda. Who is that? It's allegedly another grooming victim of Dreams. Apparently, she had been messaging with Dream between September 23, 2020 and January 2021. We're talking text messages. She shows the screenshots of their conversations. In January, they apparently moved to Snapchat and she claims they sexted on there between January 17th and February 10th. During that time, she claims that Dream sent her a picture of his penis. However, she never saved those Snapchat conversations because she wanted Dream to trust her. The other girl, Anastasia, also claimed that some of the damning there's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away.
I wasn't avoiding therapy, but I just didn't think it was for me. The idea of therapy I grew up with was someone laying on a couch talking about their problems while someone else sits in a chair, smokes a pipe, and pretends to listen. But that idea completely changed for me when I decided to give BetterHelp a try. I signed up for BetterHelp because personally, I've struggled with anxiety and intrusive thoughts, and I've never really felt like I've had anyone to talk to about it. And now, because BetterHelp is online therapy, I get to sit comfortably at home and video chat with my therapist so that I can clearly see they're paying attention and they actually care. I got matched with my first therapist in just a few days after signing up, but to be honest, I didn't think they were a great fit for me. So I decided to switch therapists till I found someone I liked and it was super easy. BetterHelp has completely changed my perspective on therapy and allowed me to genuinely connect with someone I feel comfortable with. And honestly, I've grown because of it. So if you're ready to give therapy a try, get comfortable and check out BetterHelp today. conversations were on snapchat part of her tweets read the worst of flirt that i recall was on snapchat and obviously those delete you can imagine the hate dream was and still is getting anytime dream would tweet or does tweet the replies are just calling him a groomer or a file dream did respond in a video stream and also on twitter on twitter on his alternate account he said that it was all a friendly conversation with anastasia and to his knowledge she was 18. he also said that some of the screenshots were real but others like the imessage ones were not because his imessage number is not linked to his tiktok account these responses are from a while back but as recently as last month he's still fighting off all these claims because new twists and additions keep cropping up you can see in these tweets for example his take on it in the main tweet he says i've been harassed for almost a year due to a false accusation right after my face reveal this person Person publicly said they'd be pressing charges and posting proof but it could take days and then went silent for a year and never did either while I waited and waited now most recently the burner 22 account popped up on November 20th claiming again that dream was messaging a minor inappropriately this account is allegedly representing a person named Jamie who they say left the internet in 2020 this is where an apparent moaning audio of dream was uh, revealed I have no idea if it's him or not but do you guys see how complicated the situation is well it looks like the burner 22 account deactivated or just got deleted I don't know and like all the dream fans are celebrating that they deactivated as I was saying in the video this is so complicated this has been one of the most complicated things I'm researching and it's not even a full video dedicated to it like I suggested before make sure to watch dreams video if you want all the information and check out the threads on your own though I will let you guys know some threads have been deleted so make with that what you will and this isn't the full story at all there's a lot more there's a lot more to this so his response video. Again, make sure to go watch that full thing yourself and form your own opinion. He breaks down the three main grooming allegations and some other stuff. Honestly, it's a pretty professionally laid out video, but it still leaves me confused. I personally don't like the editing, but I mean, he, he got his points across, you know? Just knowing about the dream allegations since they uh, started popping up, I literally hate to have been his friend while they were popping up. Though I don't know what to believe, I will ask the question, how do you have so many allegations on your name? What were you even doing? We've seen creators blow up just as fast and they don't have any allegations of this degree on their name. As sad as it seems, it seems like there's just more cons than pros when it comes to messaging fans. And by no means am I saying these claims are false. I'm just saying this all could have been avoided if he just wasn't texting fans. And yes, I know it was when he was a smaller channel and that's what makes the sentiment all that much harsher. This dude really was on top of the world at one point. He was even making content with Mr. Beast. Imagine the embarrassment of not only hundreds of millions of people hearing these accusations, but also your YouTuber friends as well. That's why they all get awkward when dream is brought up and i don't blame them hi tuppo you have three and a half million Sherlock followers on BBC. in twitter do you think you could approach the dream allegations topic at some point okay i'm gonna talk about this because this is serious now and i've seen it a lot in the chat um but I'm not Dream's friend, and if anyone cares of what I have to say, I think he's extremely irresponsible for the way he's handled these allegations up until this point. Now, I won't lie. I respect him facing the music head on with a main channel video, but the fact that it had to be made is embarrassing. Like I said before, I'm only summarizing for you guys. I really do urge you guys to check out the threads for yourself along with his video. They will be linked down in the description below. Anyway, let's head on to the next one.
Boogie2988. One of the most insane stories of YouTubers nuking their careers has to be that of Stephen J. Williams, aka Boogie2988. I mean, this dude literally went from having millions of views per video to barely cracking the 10,000 view threshold, and the way he did that is a pretty messed up story of one terrible decision after another. So, first things first, who is Boogie? Well, a very short summary is that he used to be one of the most popular YouTubers in the gaming scene with a really massive audience. We're talking about 4 million subscribers. His videos were essentially centered on his life and gaming stuff, constantly give life updates, showcase his gameplay, and rant about stuff while playing a character named Francis. And he was very charming while doing all of this. So charming that it was easy for people to love him with heartwarming comments like, you're awesome Boogie, thanks for being a part of YouTube, and have a Merry Christmas. And nothing has made me laugh this much in a while, ha ha ha, keep it up man. So how exactly did this one beloved creator turn into one of the most hated? That right there is a question that can be answered by a beautiful documentary by Mike Klum. Now I'm obviously not going to go over everything that has been said about him, but I just want to show you guys how messy this dude's life has been, particularly in how he managed or more like mismanaged his money to the point that he's on the verge of homelessness. So let's wind back a little bit. Boogie started his channel back in 2006. He made lots of videos and somewhere around 2019, he was truly at the peak of his income game. Again, all along, at least for the first few years, he had been a charming, transparent, and entertaining creator. He made likable videos, for example, this one, where he's talking about growing up poor and how this turned him frugal, and this one where he's discussing his YouTube income. FYI, in that video published in 2016, he disclosed that he was making about $100,000 per year. Pretty good money, right? He also drew lots of sympathy in the 2015-2016 period as he underwent a gastric bypass surgery to solve his weight issues. Now, unfortunately, this is around the time when the tide began turning. First, he got divorced and became an emotional wreck. In fact, if you googled when Boogie's downfall began, you would probably find people agreeing that it was right after his divorce. His income did not dip immediately, though. The dip happened about two years later. In 2018, he made $498,000. In 2019, he made $152,000. In 2020, he made $72,000. $1,300. In 2021, he made $46,250. And in 2022, he made $26,000. Now, interestingly, between 2018 and 2019, a user on Reddit that goes by Night Like Day apparently posted this now deleted thread that detailed all the awful things that Boogie has said for as long as he has been online. Like a mega thread of all of Boogie's shit talk. And not just shit talk. It was a thread of his unhinged jokes and racist comments, including multiple uses of the N word. And people began sharing it with brands, which in turn made him lose sponsors and hence the dip. Anyway, by 2022, the guy was making $26,000 a year, with a monthly overhead of $7,000. His ex-wife had been the one budgeting for him and doing all the money stuff, so all this is happening while bills are piling up. He has no money and doesn't know how to budget. This is how he ended up with car payments, mortgage, health expenses, etc., and no cash for any of it. Oh, and while at it, he buys random things he doesn't need. In the documentary, for instance, he says he heard his TV producing a crackling sound and immediately went to Amazon and bought a $100 sound bar, only to find out the next day that his TV was just just fine. Anyway, given his really bad math, he has been forced to pawn off stuff just so he can pay his mortgage and cater to basic expenses. And again, just to emphasize how bad Boogie is at finances, he recently participated in a boxing match to try to raise some cash. He got paid $10,000 but had already spent more than $10,000 in the match preparedness process. Now given that this dude has been on YouTube for 17 years, you might be curious as to where all of his saved up money went, right? Well first there's what went with his wife, then out of an estimated $750,000 he had, he put $600,000 of it into some random crypto and lost all of it. And that's not all. At some other point, he spent around $200,000 on prostitutes. That was about $40,000 a year on prostitutes. Beyond that, another natural question to ask is why doesn't he just make the money back on YouTube? Well, for him, that's kind of impossible. He has stepped on so many toes that he just can't come back. In fact, most people now regard him as the most manipulative creator with really depressing content. There's actually a whole video arguing why even the documentary is all a lie, aka his way of manipulating people. He's always seen begging and asking for a pity party, which is far from his original charming self. In the documentary, a psychologist actually diagnoses him with covert narcissism, with its manifestation being pessimism, hypersensitivity, to criticism, reactive anger, need for admiration, self-centeredness, entitlement, and belief in being special. Anyway, as I wrap this story up, in all honesty, his entire story is pretty depressing. One part that is just really gross is that he's been dating a 20-year-old. Keep in mind, this man is nearly 50. He is 49. That's just, uh... But yeah, it seems like Boogie's life and career has reached rock bottom. Quebble Cop.
This next YouTuber, known as Quebble Cop, thought he was onto something when he discovered a new way to endlessly spew AI-generated garbage all over his audience. Instead, he is now paying for this rather dumb mistake. When I came across Quebble Cop's story, I couldn't help but side with all the other content creators who believe he's become a mockery of the entire essence of content creation. And to be clear, what I mean by this is real hard work, real experiences, and genuinely connecting with audiences, which basically means having a personality, right? So what's the deal with Quebble Cop? I've already hinted that he's been spewing endless AI generated videos hoping that he found an infinite money glitch and his downward spiral based on that content has been so sad to watch so let's dive into it officially known as jordy maxime van den bush but let's just call him quebble cop for the rest of the video he's not a new youtuber he's been at it for a good minute starting his channel back in 2008 this english-speaking dutch creator has so far made about 5,000 videos gained over 15 million subscribers and gotten just a little over 7 billion views absolutely astronomical numbers by any measure he officially started posting in 2011 and during this period, at least for the most part, he focused on gameplay. He uploaded one video every day at the same time. That's actually how he became big. He was consistent and put out good content. He became notable and even at one point, through his group of YouTubers named Robust, he worked under the PewDiePie network called Revel Mode. Now, this dude had some serious grit back in the day. He worked with and dated the lovely Azzyland, a really popular Canadian content creator, and he also did partner with another smaller YouTuber, Hassan of Tiger, now Liger, got a share of their channel's ownership, and later just took over altogether. Not for good reasons, though for AI reasons. All this time, specifically from 2015 to 2020, Quebble Cop's main channel was thriving. Remember, the dude was posting every single day. Then sadly, there came a decline of viewers and subscribers. Of course, there are different theories as to why this happened, but I think YouTuber's serial introvert's theory is more believable. Basically, during this time, it's possible that Quebble Cop might have just gotten distracted by his game development company, JVDB, and also his other channel, Blue. Blue was actually a virtual YouTuber entirely generated using AI. He might have been distracted enough to make less exciting content on the main channel. Post-2020, as if to pivot and recover, he then tried doing lots of reaction content, but that didn't work well. So he then made a big announcement about making content that centered on his life that he was more excited about. But despite the announcement, he still kept up with the reaction videos. Somehow, his viewership dipped. I think he just stopped being as exciting to his audience. Then, the big shift came when, following a short break, he came back with an idea which I honestly believe he thought he was a genius for. He decided to clone himself. Actually, according to this tweet, he had made the decision earlier and had been working on it since 2018. With his clone in place, he went ahead and posted his first AI-generated video, and it went completely downhill from there. Today, in Minecraft, I am stuck on one block. Can we survive? Watch until the end to find out. Oh my god, guys, it says break the block below you, but I can't lie, I'm kind of scared because I'm not sure if we'll actually regenerate, but let's just do it. And, huh? Oh my god, the block will regenerate. This is insane. Okay, guys, so we just had to keep on breaking this because it is an infinite block and it spawns more than that. Of course, of course. Okay. So what was once a thriving channel loved by many for the fond childhood memories quickly turned into an absolute mess. It was taken over by an underwhelming avatar making robotic commentary on Minecraft gameplay. His fans, well, the few that had stuck around, were having none of it. The video got comments like, dude went from peak childhood entertainment to can't even be bothered to make the videos himself now. I miss the old Quebble Cop. Remember when Jordy was actually in front of a camera and not just AI? And it wasn't just his fans. Other content creators were also in disbelief at his new lazy style. He even made it on the news. And then, in the classic style of jumping from the frying pan into the fire, he doubled down on his idea. He, for example, used his AI self to react to fellow YouTubers as they reacted to his AI shift. Then, making it even worse, he made an announcement that he had hurt his audience and was making a switch. Only for that announcement to turn out as being an AI-generated clip announcing a more skilled AI, Quebble Cop AI. 11 years ago, I started my YouTube journey. My one and only goal was to entertain as many people as possible, to share my joy with the world and to form new friendships. I had a lot of fun. As much as I don't like the idea, I will admit the AI clip is pretty good. Like it's pretty good AI. Oh, and while all this was going down on YouTube, he was making those weird AI clips for TikTok and posting about his like AI wife and child on Twitter. Pretty weird stuff. Anyway, the only thing that resulted from all of this is that he ruined the years of trust he had within his fan base. Not to mention he completely killed his channel. Probably realizing his career dunking mistake, just recently he has made a new video announcing the return of the real him. I guess all we can do now is stand by to see what comes of the channel. Mini Lad. Now, this next creator, Mini Lad, is currently feeling the pinching consequences of trying to sweep things under the rug, but failing terribly at it. And you don't even have to dig a lot to see that. In his latest videos, the comments tell it all. For instance, in a new video titled I Got Robbed, there are gut wrenching comments, and maybe deservingly so, like, imagine being a robber, but somehow you're not the worst person in the house. There's worse things than robbing. 
You of all people should know that, Craig. Damn, you should have robbed your hard drive to see what's on it. Lol. Now, if this is the first time you are coming across Craig Mini Lad Thompson, you could immediately wonder why he's getting so much heat. Well, the last comment that I highlighted is a great segue into that. When the person saying the robber should have robbed Craig's hard drive to see what's on there, they are referring to the terrible case of pedophilia associated with the creator. Now, this happened back in 2020, and while it's not solely responsible for his downfall, it's definitely a huge part of it. In June of 2020, a tweet from a girl named Hallie went viral with claims that Craig had manipulated her when she was just 16 17, while he was over 20 years old. So, how did it happen? Well, it starts with Craig being friends with Hallie for quite some time. Hallie was even there for him during his depressive episode following the breakup, and Craig helped her here and there with random things. Fast forward, Hallie, 16 at the time, develops a massive crush on Craig, and they are constantly constantly chatting and making jokes, including a joke about his junk being small. It turns out, just a little later, they move the conversation to Discord, and Craig sends her unsolicited photos of himself in underwear to prove that his thing is not small. And as if that wasn't enough, doubling down on his crime, apparently he did it to someone else. Hallie in her tweet says that Craig acted the same way, or worse, to another girl named Ash. Also, apparently Craig was using depression and suicide as a way to manipulate Hallie to not out him. He even used it as an excuse for interacting inappropriately with Ash, knowing well that she was 17. Now, Hallie goes on to share a couple other screenshots as evidence of his gross behavior. And all I can say is that he was pretty much caught pants down, no pun intended. There was really no way of him to deny any of it. Side note, I'm not gonna go into any of his other choices, like for example, the whole Thanos gaming beef that he had. Moving on, having been outed publicly, Craig went on to issue an apology and promised to work on himself. He also did a video apology admitting to his mistakes and again, putting part of the blame on his depression and suicidal tendencies. Then, in a rather weird twist, Minilad deleted his apologies. He also deleted his entire Twitter and made the YouTube video private. And he went away for a quote, mental health break, and then came back posting on his second channel, Craig Thompson, as if nothing happened. And a lot of people just took that as like sweeping it under the rug. My question for these creators is why even come back? Why why come back to YouTube? Like, you know, I named this video YouTubers who ruin their lives and I do mean that. I do mean you ruin a portion of your life if you are exposed as a file. Yeah, so I don't know how you'd expect to just come back to the internet with open arms. You know, I did ask one of my YouTuber friends uh, that's been in the game for a long time and I asked him, do you know any YouTubers who like, got canceled and like, what did they do when they leave the internet? And he's like, oh, they work behind the scenes on stuff like running businesses behind the scenes or running stuff to do with other creators behind the scenes. So in case you guys were wondering how some of them maintain themselves off the internet, that's how. So it's just interesting that like, they have choices. They can just go do something behind the scenes because obviously they don't want to go work a nine to five. Their, their ego wouldn't let them and their paranoia wouldn't let them if someone sees like, hey, many lads like bagging my groceries and they start recording it. It's like anything but the internet, I feel like at that point. You get exposed to something, okay, do anything but the internet. Anyway, uh, that's just my opinion. Let's head on to the next one. Brooke Houts. Four years ago in 2019, this next YouTuber got so much backlash over animal abuse that her career never really recovered afterward. I'm talking about 20-year-old Brooke Houts, who, as seen in this video, uploaded footage of her hitting her dog, a Doberman breed. Yes, she accidentally uploaded the video. She forgot to cut that part out while editing. In the footage, you can see the dog innocently walking to her and trying to lick her, and Brooke, in a swift response, immediately smacks the dog and then goes on to shout at and push him. Now, this of course drew a lot of anger. It went viral and Brooke realized this. So what did she do? Well, she deleted the video and re-uploaded the new version without that part. <laughs> Obviously, uh, re-uploads exist. And as more people saw the video, the anger was so far reaching that even PETA was calling for her removal from YouTube. Also, the LAPD got involved, although they didn't press any charges. Talking to BuzzFeed, they said, Animal Task Force looked into the matter. Obviously, they saw the video the public had seen. They determined it didn't rise to the level of animal cruelty. Brooke, who had about 320,000 subscribers at the time, then issued an apology in video and on Twitter. In the apology, she basically argued that she had been training the dog and admitted that her error was just not having done it right. She said, I'm always looking at ways to improve how I I personally train him at home. The apology was not well received either, from some terming it as the worst YouTube apology. Later, Brooke tried making a comeback in content creation, even going more religious and promising to seek therapy, but the damage had already been done. It looks like her career and social life ended just like that. EDP 445. We've talked about people who have done stupid stuff and ended their careers, but EDP is a different story. A popular figure across the internet, EDP 445, a creator who began his channel back in 2010 when he was just 19, found himself on the wrong side of the law and the online community after it was revealed, with basically no shadow of a doubt, that he was preying on underage girls. Here on the Tub channel, we have three videos dedicated to him. In two of those, I smoked his pack. And by the way, he has acknowledged my existence and called me the F word. Yeah, I seen like a guy that fucking went literally 
we to the same place. And then, like, was, like, acting like he was smoking your pack or some shit. Oh, yeah, shit. Fucking camera. Yeah, oh, you saw that shit? Uh, I think so. Was he, like... Asian. Oh, Asian. Oh, okay. Nah, this one guy I saw, this nigga looked fucking gay, dude, on some fucking rainbow-colored hair shit. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. He was caught through a sting operation organized by YouTuber Alex Rosen, who did online sting operations on his channel, Predator Poachers, also known as Chet Goldstein. EDP, whose real name is Brian Moreland, was intercepted while trying to meet a decoy 13-year-old who he had been exchanging inappropriate chats with. And I know that sounds horrible, but the chats are even worse. He sent some pretty explicit stuff, like, uh, I think he even sent a picture of his poop at one point. When it comes to EDP, um, it's almost like a waste of time explaining the story. The story of EDP is like that of the book. Man. Everyone seems to know it, but no one wants any part. Viewer discretion is advised. Amaya, I see you. I always have. Tigers move in silence to catch their prey. You are a tiger, Maya. What did you do? Studios Echo, all episodes streaming January 9th. Part of it. Now, interestingly, when he got caught, he initially fiend having gone to the meetup location to buy a cupcake, but when he was shown the text messages, he admitted to everything immediately. For example, they ask him, You did double text here, correct? Knowing she was 13? And he simply says, Correct. Probably stunned at how easily he admitted to it, they ask again, So you initiated a conversation with a 13 year old knowing she was 13? And again, he just says, correct also the worst part is that this wasn't the only case it turns out that adp had been previously catfished by someone pretending to be a 17 year old girl and he took the bait even sending them explicit images and threatening them should they leak the messages that was in october of 2020 and again he had apparently been accused of inappropriate conversations with a minor just a few months back in july of 2020 going back to the sting operation what puzzled me is that while adp admitted to fantasizing about girls under the age of 16 he tried to defend himself by saying my mom did not raise a fucking File, which was bizarre because he was caught doing the exact thing he was trying to deny. Anyway, what followed that is that EDP deleted all his main channel videos a day later. Then about a week later on April 28th, 2021, YouTube deleted both EDP and Alex Rosen's YouTube channels. Alex Rosen also has a bunch of stuff he's done, which 2021 Tub has made a video about in case you want to go check that out. Updates from later in 2021 were that EDP might have potentially been put in jail. This was untrue, however. And hold on to your seat for this one. Just about four months ago, EDP was apparently caught again trying to meet a minor. Yeah, after all that public exposure and backlash, he went right back into it. He was actually caught again by YouTubers Jadeon and Skeeter. However, the video was supposed to come out on Jadeon's channel, but Jadeon recently had like a like a religious turn in his life where he like doesn't do pranks anymore, so he just focuses on religion. So that video was given to Skeeter. I think Skeeter put that on his own website where you have to pay to watch it. So there's like re-uploads on on YouTube. I watched I watched the video and uh, that screenshot is basically the whole video. Uh, it was not as uh, entertaining as the first one. This this dude's life is a living hell. Ever since 2021, he's been broke, he can't keep a job, he's been evicted a couple of times, he lives off a suitcase in sketchy places, people have called hotels that he's in telling people to kick him out, he used to work for Uber, and people would take pictures of him saying like, yo, EDP's my driver. People record him in public, and I've actually seen someone record him at a grocery store, and that TikTok went viral. Who that? EDP. That's me, man. What's up, bro? Look at this nasty ass. Don't get your fucking ass beat, bro. Beat it, beat it, go beat your motherfucking ass in this store right now, you nasty ass child motherfucker. Yeah, you look at you, you fuck. What's up, man? I ain't go, I ain't go touch you, nasty. But yeah, it's safe to say that EDP ruined his life. Shane Dawson. I feel like this video wouldn't be complete without talking about Shane Dawson. His case is a very accurate example of the phrase the internet never forgets. How so? Well, just recently on December 11th, Shane and his partner Rylan Adams announced their birth of their twin boys via a surrogate on Instagram. The news got shared all over by other accounts such as PopCrave on Twitter, and on that PopCrave post specifically, the comments show exactly how the internet never forgets. I'm talking about comments like, save those poor babies. How can someone with a long documented history of 
pedophilic statements and actions be allowed to adopt a surrogate child and someone called Child Protective Services. Now, the reason they're reacting like this is because Shane, who has been a YouTuber since 2005, made some horrific claims in his earlier videos. But like what, for example? Well, in his old podcast, Shane and Friends, he narrates how he thought a six-year-old was um, attractive. He said a lot of stuff that I literally can't repeat in this video. When it comes to Shane Dawson, there are millions of controversies with him saying the most horrific stuff known to mankind. And there's also a bunch of videos of him casually doing blackface, using the N-word, and his admission to doing something really weird to a cat, which I'm not going to say in this video, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know something he did to a cat, which then he claimed was a joke, but it didn't sound like a joke. Ugh, it's just stuff like that. His defense is the usual, times were different back then, which, uh, he was a grown man back then still. It wasn't like he was 14 making those statements. He was still a grown man. Following the consistent backlash, he issued an apology video in 2020, saying that he hates the version of himself from the past so much. He admits that he was full of anger and sadness, including due to being in the closet and just projecting on others. He also highlights giving excuses and previous apologies, saying, I made a video six years ago talking about it, which was the blackface, and I gave excuses. Blackface was something I did a lot. Like, I did it a lot on my channel, and there's no excuse for it. There's literally no excuse. He also apologized for making some weird characters in his videos that made weird jokes about kids. It's really insane that he did all that stuff uh, so long ago, and then he had that, like, almost like his peak viewership. Y'all remember the Shane Dawson conspiracy videos and the Shane Dawson documentaries? And then he got hit with these tweets reminding him of his past. It's just so interesting how it, it can come back at any moment. I am a strong believer and people can change. I'm sure he doesn't think, like, these tweets or these uh, videos. I'm sure he's not rocking blackface at his fucking house now. I'm sure he's scarred and learned from it. Uh, the hard way, I would say, but like I said before, it's like if you get canceled to this degree because you did some stupid stuff, why come back on the internet, man? He's gonna live his life no matter what. We can't stop that, but uh, I hope he's grown. That's all I can say for that, honestly. All right, guys, that was it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like. If you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. I upload a bunch of morbid videos. And again, if you want to support me directly, make sure to buy some slippers over at EarlDoesn'tExist.com. I don't know if this is the last video of 2023, but if it is, Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, and Happy New Year. Thank you guys for watching my videos. It means a lot to me. But yeah, I also have a Patreon. <laughs> That's it. I'll see you guys next time I upload. We've all seen this image of Bigfoot, right? Have you ever wondered where it came from, who took it, and if it's fake? What about this one of the Loch Ness Monster? And what about the tale of La Llorona? Well, today we're diving into unexplained urban legend sightings. Well, explain the best I could. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. The day that this is being uploaded, August 16th, two days on August 18th, my album will come out. Stop loving me. It is my first ever rock album and I'm moving on to rock. I left Hyperpop. I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to say that for people to start getting the idea, but there will be a full album movie here and I invite all of you. I hope to see you guys there. It'll be a nice event. It premieres on August 18th at 6 p.m. PST. So, Turn on notifications for the channel. You can turn them off later. Anyway, let's get right into the video. Bigfoot. Starting us off is the famous Bigfoot sighting. And before we even get to where and who saw Bigfoot, have you ever wondered how big he is? Pause. I know that sounded weird. According to the Arizona State Museum, the Bigfoot's footprint is about 18 inches, 45.7 centimeters long, and 9.2 inches, 23.3 centimeters wide. For perspective, normal people considered to have a big footprint can have feet sized at about 13.5 inches, which is 34 centimeters in length, and 4.275 inches, which is 10.8 centimeters in width. The average person's footprint is of course smaller than that. This photo shows the difference when the two are put together side by side. So, who saw Bigfoot first? Well, among the very first mentions is one that dates back to a story of two men working for a logging company at a place called Bluff Creek Road in California. This was back in 1958 and these two men, Jerry Crew and the logging site foreman, Wilbur Shorty Wallace, were among the first ones to see the quote, big and man-like prints that were etched deeply into the earth. As they talked over it, other crew members joined in and it quickly became a discussion on other sightings. One of the crew members mentioned that similar prints had been seen at a site in Mad River in Upper Northern California. 20 of the other workers confirmed that version. Then another mentioned that more prints had also been seen in Trinidad, up the coast. While some people have dismissed the story as just an attempt by the loggers to pass on stories with a quote, legendary flavor, there is some compelling evidence that keeps people curious even today. 
For instance, there's this cast of a foot track obtained from Bluff Creek, California, that left people wondering who or what creature would make such a print. A lot of early stories leaned onto the explanation that he was a primal, dangerous creature from the past who lurked in the modern wilderness. Even more bizarre is that in October 1967, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin, having heard Crew and Wallace's story, went deep into the woods at Bluff Creek in search of Bigfoot, and they came back with footage of the creature. The footage was taken about 80 feet away, and while grainy and shaky, it shows a creature strolling through a clearing. Even crazier is that the creature in the footage is unlike any other animal or human known to inhabit the region. And even though this footage could be seen as a man in a gorilla suit, it actually reminds me of when Patrick, uh... <laughs> it actually reminds me of that Spongebob episode where Patrick unzipped himself and it's a gorilla. Or is it the other way around? It reminds me of that. Anyway, with the amount of people assuming that it's a man in a gorilla suit, there are some Bigfoot researchers that deny that. For example, Jeffrey Muldrum, a professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University, said, It's also easy to say, obviously that's a man in a fursuit, until you see it up against a man in a fursuit. What he meant was that comparing what is in the footage to a man in a fursuit shows a clear difference. He compares the footage to a scene in the sauna in the 1970 sequel, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Obviously, the scene has a man in fake fur. In contrast, about the anatomy of the creature in the footage, which he shows to his students, he explains that as students examine it, quote, they start at the head and they can see the trapezius. They can see the deltoid, erector spine down the back, shoulder blades moving under the skin. The quads contract when they're supposed to contract, none of which ever show up in a cheap off-the-shelf costume. Another well-known Bigfoot researcher, Cliff Barockman, shared evidence that it wasn't so easy to dismiss the footprints. This is because they shared a very distinctive pressure ridge that could have been made by the same creature in different locations. This image here shows Barockman's analysis, and there's even more. This is a handprint by Ivan Marks, thought to be by Bigfoot. It was found in 1970 just north of Colville, Washington. While it's a copy of the original, Grover Krantz, a physical anthropologist, said his analysis showed that it contained details that he thought were too difficult to fake. And what's more? Well, more sightings of Bigfoot in the modern world. As of 2018, according to the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, there's been at least one sighting in every state except Hawaii. BFRO records, reports of new sightings, and the most recent one is by a family that claimed they saw, quote, an upright and dark bipedal figure, unquote. Three times on their property since 2015. The sightings were by their grandkids. On one occasion, the creature stood by watching them, then when they looked away, it moved a little and stopped when they looked back at it. While one of the pictures they provided of the figure looked like a bear, it was absurd since there are no bears in Illinois Will County. So, what do you think? Is Bigfoot really real, or was it just a guy in a costume and all the other sightings and all the other footprints are faked too? Loch Ness Monster. Now there's a better way to get live TV. Switch to Frontier Fiber and save $10 a month on YouTube TV. Hurry, try YouTube TV for free with no long-term contracts or hidden fees. Uncable yourself. Get fiber internet. Next up on our creepier urban legend sightings is the Loch Ness Monster. This creature, although fondly referred to as Nessie, is nothing close to this lovely name, as seen here, which is among the first reported sightings of the monster in Scotland on April 19, 1934. It's a scaringly large reptile that dwells in water, specifically the waters of Loch Ness, which is a large freshwater lake in the Scottish Highlands, extending for a length of about 23 miles and covering an area of 33.8 square miles. That photo I just showed you was taken by an English physician, Robert Kenneth Wilson, and is commonly referred referred to as the, quote, surgeon's photograph. It spurred a lot of fear and confusion as people imagined how large the creature was if what they saw in the photo was just the head and neck. A lot of illustrations have been made to quench this imagination, and this here is one of the modern artworks which offers an imagined version of the full view of the creature's form. It kind of reminds me of the, I forgot the name of it, but in Mario 64 that, I think it was actually based on the Loch Ness Monster, but yeah, that sea creature in Mario 64, I just wanted to say that. After Wilson's story was published in the Daily Mail, people began speculating that the creature was actually a plesiosaur, a long-necked monstrous creature that existed in the European seas around 66 million years ago. If that were true, the creature would be around 15 feet long. Notably, before the quote, surgeon's photograph, the legend of this monster had been a thing in the Loch Ness region. The ancient people of the region, named Pict due to their body paintings, for example, did stone carvings that showed a mysterious monster with flippers. The monsters are also mentioned by a Christian missionary to the region, St. Columba, who noted that in 565 AD, the monster was prepared to attack a man when Columba intervened, ordering the beast to go back. Other 
sightings were claimed along the way, but most people believe the whole thing was simply an extension of the Spanish folklore, which is based around mythical water monsters. This was until 1933 when a road that was adjacent to the Loch Ness had been built and passerbyers had a perfect view of the lake. In April of that year, a couple claimed they saw a gigantic animal that looked like a quote, dragon or prehistoric monster and that it crossed their car's path, disappearing into the water. In December of that year, Daily Mail, the news publisher, commissioned a game hunter called Marmaduke Weatherwell to find that creature. He came back with reports that along the shoreline, he found prints of a very powerful soft-footed animal about 20 feet long. This news of course spurred more effort from people trying to locate Nessie the creature. Further along, the stories about the monster got more weird. For example, during World War II, an Italian newspaper, Papalo d'Italia, reported that the Loch Ness monster had been killed through a direct bomb hit by a German air raid. However, this claim was quickly dismissed after J. McFarlane Barrow, who was on a boat trip with his three children, said they saw Nessie. This was around 1941. After the claim, Daily Mail published an article saying that Nessie had survived the bombing by the Nazis. Several other sightings have been claimed since then, and they are a little too many to go over individually. However, some interesting ones include this one by Jolene Lin, who said she saw a snake-like head emerging from the water, and this one from 2014, where an image came up on the Apple Maps app after being captured by a satellite. And it shows a shadow in the lock about 100 feet long, with what looks like two giant flippers moving it through the waters. Beyond the photos, there's even a video. In 2018, Caroline Barnett, a business consultant, claimed she recorded the monster popping in and out of the water in this grainy webcam video. She said, quote, it was quite a size, the size of a boat, but it was hard to tell because it was the other side of the lock. And added, I didn't know if I believed in Nessie, but this is certainly some Christmas present and quite a surprise. That same year, in 2018, an expedition for eDNA sampling by a team of global scientists was set up in icy depths of Loch News, and among other goals, was meant to prove if the monster really did exist. The scientific basis of the experiment was that as long as the creature left behind skin, scales, feathers, fur, feces, and urine, it would be able to analyze it against existing databases of known genetic sequences and maybe identify it. The scientific expedition didn't find any monster DNA. Geneticist Neil Jamel of Otago University, who led the New Zealand team, said, right from the get-go, I said I don't believe in the monster. And that's still my position, but wouldn't it be amazing if I was wrong? And he might be wrong because a video published by Mirror, the UK newspaper, claims to be the most recent footage of Nessie captured by Eoin, and I'm not gonna pronounce that last name, a Locke resident who was dedicated to finding the monster. So what about this one? Do you guys think this one's real or fake? Because I get it. Faking the Bigfoot one, I mean, just a guy in a gorilla suit. But how do you even fake this one? I don't know. At good editing? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. La Llorona. Imagine yourself visiting southwest New Mexico, and on a lazy evening, you decide to take a stroll along the Santa Fe River. In typical horror film style, a creepy figure appears between the trees and the shoreline. A tall, thin woman, donning a tattered and soiled gown, floating and gliding above the waters, starts to trail you. You first see her from far off. She goes up to the hills and disappears. Then she suddenly reappears out of nowhere, but much closer to you. And the woman is wailing every time you see her. What's your reaction? Well, this is said to be an actual experience by Patricion Lugan's family family that was sitting outside a long creek between Mora and Guadalupita, New Mexico. The woman they saw was La Llorona, or at least her spirit, who roams the Santa Fe rivers and creeks, wailing into the night and searching for children to drag. Now there are many versions of the origin story of La Llorona, but the common theme in all of them is that she's a spirit of an ill-fated mother who drowned her children and thus spends an eternity searching for them in the rivers and lakes. One of the interesting legends behind her existence was that she was once a caring woman full of love and life. She had been married to a wealthy man who showered her with love, attention, and gifts. Together they had two sons, after which her husband changed. He went back to a life of alcohol and womanizing, to the point that he left her alone with her children for months on end. He no longer cared for her, and even threatened to leave and marry a woman of his own class. He stayed away most of the time, only coming back to see the sons. La Llorona thus increasingly grew resentful of her sons. She, however, did nothing to harm them until this one time when her husband gave her an explicit display of disrespect. Apparently, while Maria was out taking an evening walk with her sons on a shady path by the river, her husband pulled up in a carriage with an elegant lady beside him. He spoke only to his children before proceeding down the path without looking back. He completely ignored La Llorona, which was named Maria, and she felt humiliated and went into a terrible rage. She took out the rage on her children, seizing them and throwing them into the river where they started disappearing downstream. Immediately, she realized what she had done and tried running after them, but it was too late. They were gone. This trauma of loss turned her inconsolable. She went into grief, mourning her children day and night. During this period, she did not eat or drink, but just walked along the river 
her in a white gown, searching for her boys. She did this for a long time. Her gown became torn and soiled, and because she wasn't eating or drinking, she became thin to the point of looking like a walking skeleton. Eventually, she died on the river banks. Can you guess what happened next? Yep, she turned into a ghost. Her relentless spirit started appearing along the banks of Santa Fe River, walking, weeping, wailing, and cursing the night. On dark nights, people would see her floating on the water or drifting along the trees on the shoreline. Of course, this made people to go out during the nighttime because they believed if they went out during a night walk, La Llorona was gonna kill them. Yeah, I mean, I'd be scared too, not gonna lie. Tales about her vary in detail, but in all of them, she acts without hesitation or mercy. In some tales, she kills everyone, men, women, and children, while in others, she only kills children, dragging them into the watery grave while screaming. Besides the family that I mentioned at the start, there have been other sightings of the woman. For example, she has been seen multiple times in the Para Public Employees Retirement Association building, which stands on land that was once a graveyard near the Santa Fe River. Apparently, many people who have worked there tell of hearing cries in the halls and feeling unseen hands pushing them into the stairway. In 2016, this image popped up online to the horror of residents of Temecula, California. Some said that it was definitely La Llorona due to the long black hair and the white gown and the fact that she appeared near the city's duck pond, a large body of water. In a more recent case, this image, captured by Martin Godinez as he drove at 2 a.m. from his friend's house, has been purported to be that of La Llorona. Not gonna lie, that looks like when people make a cheap costume of a ghost and then they cut eye holes through it. That's exactly what that looks like. He said he didn't see her but only noticed her image after realizing his camera had captured something after he got home. A local paranormal investigator, Edgar Vega, said, quote, There's definitely something going on here, but I do believe that this is none other than La Llorona. This was because the sighting was at Father Nick Nabo near the Rio Grande River. His argument was that the woman's energies would get attracted to water. He also explained that since the woman in the image is wearing a white gown, it definitely might have been La Llorona. The only bit that didn't match her original form is that she was quiet. Maybe it could be argued that she's evolving and moving around a bit. Historically, her wanderings have been growing wider. Wider, reaching as far north as Montana on the banks of Yellowstone River. I really tried my best to include La Llorona in this video. Shout out all my Latinos watching this, but even though some of the evidence is, I mean, it's like the only human I'm like really taught that's like an urban legend. I shouldn't say that. I probably, you know what? Maybe it's not the only human, but still, I should want to include La Llorona. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's head on to the next one. The Jersey Devil. Apparently, it seems like each state in the US has at least one urban legend going. Some feel like light-hearted folklore, but others are so disturbing that they blur the line between reality and mythology. This next story, The Legend of the Jersey Devil, falls right at the center of the others category. Right off, just watch this short clip of the most recent sighting. Oh my god, bro. Oh, oh hell no, man. What the now, I'm gonna be the first one to tell you that is fake. What was that? What was that PNG across the screen? I have no idea either, <laughs> but it's just an interesting one to add to the list. The video is from October 2015 and was captured at Old Port Republic Road near Leeds Point by Emily Martin. And what's interesting is that just a few days earlier, this photo was taken in Galloway Township by David Black, a little egg harbor resident. Yeah, look at that image, guys. Definitely not fake. According to David, he had been driving along Route 9 near a golf course when he saw what he thought was a llama. It was walking in and out of the tree line by the road, but then it suddenly spread its wings and flew away. Both Emily and David swear that they didn't doctor the the footage at all how do you claim that you didn't like mess with the footage especially the first video that was horrible that was a horrible video <laughs> and also why would you just record and gap <gasps> girl ain't you gonna run you see like a demon go you're not gonna run stop playing with me bro like y'all like, just gonna keep lying about this anyway <laughs> let's continue with what they said now assuming that the image and video are true it then means that the strange creature from old folklore might still be around and roaming freely in jersey woods you know there's a link between the creature and the story from back in the 1700s and the one seen in 2015 all accounts note that it's winged horse-like bipedal and horned sort of like this artist's illustration from 1982 and this one from 1909 you can probably see how someone can confuse it for a llama because of the shape the tall neck and the head now among the first sightings of this creature is back in 1812 when a man named joseph bonaparte Napoleon's older brother, said that he saw it when on a hunting expedition near his Bordentown estate. The creature's legend grew from there and it had people fried into the core. This Trenton Times newspaper print from 1909 sort of shows what mood Bordentown Jersey was in at the time. The subheading says, Hoofprints in the snow, whirring noises in the air, and other uncanny manifestations reach Bordentown and Mount Holly after making a sensation in lower counties where natives remain indoors after sundown. Clearly, the Leeds Devil had been in other places too, the lower counties. The paper might have meant counties like 
Salem, Atlantic, Cape May, and Cumberland, comparing it to a creature in Bridgeton in 1873 and one in Point Leeds in 1894. There is extensive description of its looks in the article. Apparently, besides looking like a horse with wings and standing on two feet, it had great form and could crawl through a hole less than a foot in diameter. It has a cat-like ability to walk on fences and approximately weighs less than 20 pounds. From that point, 1909 onwards, there were over 1,000 eyewitness stories of the creature. The legend then faded a bit until 1927 when a taxi driver said that while changing a tire, he was attacked by a winged creature that was pounding on the roof of the cab. Later sightings would be reported in the 1960s with wealthy businessmen offering rewards of up to $250,000 for its capture. And we know it's the same creature because of this poster here. Oh, and it gets even weirder. In the 1980s, it's believed that the Jersey Devil killed a pack of pigs and drained all their blood. Chief Ranger Alan McFarlane of the Warden State Forest, while recollecting on what he called a brutal scene at a Jersey farm, said that the pigs had the backs of their heads eaten and their bodies scratched and torn. There were no tracks around the body suggesting that the attacking creature must have the ability to fly. Now, just like the last tale of La Llorona, the Leeds Devil has an origin story. Legend has it that around 1735, a woman named Mother Leeds, a Pines resident, got pregnant for the 13th time. And just to note here, Leeds is among the oldest names in New Jersey and dates back to the earliest settlers in the state, which makes this legend sort of believable. Mother Leeds wasn't pleased by the pregnancy at all because she was poor and her drunk husband did little to provide for the family. Out of frustration of expecting a new child, she declared, let this one be a devil. She then gave birth to a baby boy, but soon enough, he metamorphosed right before her eyes. He turned from a beautiful newborn into a hideous creature and grew at an incredible rate. He grew horns, talon-like claws, leathery bat-like wings, and feathers all over his body. The eyes grew increasingly red in typical monster fashion. The boy then attacked his mother, killing her before ravaging the rest and killing as many as it could. It has ever since lurked around the area, terrorizing locals with every opportunity. Again, that's just the Leeds Devil urban legend. Now, I know that the evidence was, uh, not good, <laughs> but I really like this origin story. I think it's pretty cool. Pretty cool origin story. But yeah, uh, I'm not even gonna ask if you guys think this is real. I think this is like just fake. Anyway, let's head on to the outro. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. Make sure to leave a comment saying, Tuv, you are so cool and you are so hot. Yes, I know. I know I am. But make sure to tune in to the premiere. It is in two days, y'all. Make sure to go over to my Spotify when it comes out. And uh, in case some of y'all are wondering, I am not ashamed of the Hyperpop days. If it seems like that, I am not ashamed of it at all. But I am very excited to be maturing with my music. And of course, I'm going to show it off. So uh, yes, Stop Loving Me is leagues better than ear candy. I can say that confidently. And uh, that's really it for this video. Uh, make sure to go subscribe to my, make sure to go check out my Patreon if you want. Uh, $5, you get everything early, all my videos early. So uh, that's really it. I'll see you guys next time I upload. Coming in. The all new Pizza Hut $7 deal lovers menu. Because it's only a deal if you love it. This is a Collie Dog, and this is Toko the Collie Dog. Dubbed Toko the Human Dog on multiple media outlets and becoming increasingly popular for its disturbing, lifeless appearance. Inside this hyper-realistic costume is a person who's living out their dream of always wanting to be an animal. In today's video, we'll be taking a deep dive into this human dog mystery and seeing just how close we can get to finding out who this person really is. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And if I could please have your attention for just 10 seconds and then we'll get right into the video. I'll let you know when 10 seconds is up because we're gonna have a little red bar right here. We have a winter collection over at EarlDoesn'tExist.com which includes this high quality denim jacket. And we have some other new designs, so make sure to go check out the website. And also my first ever album, Ear Candy, is premiering on this channel on January 26th at 6 p.m. PST. And it's gonna be on all streaming services. So make sure to turn on post notifications. Then you can turn them off after, I really don't care. But yeah, that's it. Is the red bar over? Let's get started with the video. So, where did Toko come from? It all started on April 11th on Twitter when this tweet was posted. It had a video attached and read, I ordered a costume. Thanks to you, I was able to fulfill my dream of becoming an animal. As I'm recording this, the Twitter video has 1.9 million views, and the topic alone has garnered tens of millions of views on TikTok. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This tweet was actually a reply to Zepit's tweet, which was them revealing the costume for the customer. Zepit is an art studio that specializes in figurines, animatronics, bodysuits, 3D modeling, and robotics. They usually get commissioned for films, ads, amusement parks, and other expensive reasons. Their original tweet read, I made a dog modeling suit at the request of an individual. Modeled on a collie dog, it reproduces the appearance of a real dog that walks on all fours like a real dog. Here they also link the section of their website where they give a few more details on the costume itself, such as the fact that it took 40 days what? to create, 
and the production amount was 2 million yen, which translates Longest directly to $15,437.46. That was not a long cents. shower. We're talking USD. Remember, this doesn't mean that the costume was bought for that amount. If the company wanted to make any sort of profit, they definitely upped the price. And for the amount of work and time that went into this, I'm gonna guess that the person paid anywhere from twenty to thirty thousand dollars. Fake TikTok. Before we talk I about the person in the costume, we have I'm to talk hungry. about the fake right TikTok back. that spread like wildfire. Maybe it's the reason you know about Toko the Human Dog. On December fifth, twenty twenty-two, a TikTok was posted with the caption half dog half man the tiktok attempted to showcase the human dog costume but spread an incredible amount of misinformation to the over 11.4 million people that viewed it not only did they misspell surgery every single time but they claimed that the person in the costume got plastic surgery to look like that and paid four hundred thousand dollars he eat like dog walk like dog and sleep like dog looks like you type like one too most of the people in the comments ate it up and probably continued their day like nothing happened it's very easy to be tricked on tiktok and i don't blame anyone for believing this Stuff because it's not like everyone is going to go out of their way to research every single TikTok they come across, but hey, I'll do the job for you. TikToks that spread misinformation remind me of that blue emoji image. <laughs> but anyway, who's the person in the costume? Person in the costume. The person in the costume has a main channel named I Want To Be An Animal. The channel only has 22 videos so far and each is about five minutes on average. I watched every single video on this page and here are some notes I gathered along the way. In their second video, they flip through notes as a form of communicating to the audience. I've worked seen with some one. of the largest retailers on the planet. You think they all have what it figured good out, but Shopify really does. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Sky Does Minecraft. All right, I've been getting a lot of uh, a lot of people telling me, "Hey Sky, you should uh, you should do Minecraft." So I did. I bought it. <laughs> I regret nothing. Hey guys, Sky here, and I want to thank you all for a hundred thousand subscribers. That is a huge deal for me. Because the only thing that I want is my son. I give up my channel. I give up everything. I give up my income. I don't care about it anymore. I just want my son. I just want my son. I'm kind of unhappy with this game. I'm unhappy with the community. I'm unhappy being a Minecrafter. I'm unhappy being labeled a Minecrafter. I want to go back to making up content. Damn. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the tragic fall of Sky Does Minecraft. In today's video, we are going to be talking a lot about mental health, and I want to make it clear that I really love Sky Does Minecraft, like especially back in the day, bro. That dude was my hero. This video is just to make people I'm aware hungry. of the tragic fall. I'm I mean, get a there's drink. no other word other than tragic. I know I used that for the Tobuscus video that I made, but I think I'll just stick with that word for like all Goodbye. my other videos too. Also, I want to let you guys know that we are now at the pink hair color due to hitting 60,000 subscribers. Woo! Guys, we're at 60,000 subscribers. We're growing so quick. And if you guys think that this looks like purple, I swear it started off as pink. Here's proof. There's my Instagram. Go follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I have a new haircut. As you can see, your boy has a mullet now. Yeah, that's right. Hide your, hide your girlfriends, guys, because uh, mullet tub is gonna come in and... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm take your girl, basically. Or your guy, I don't care. Also, yesterday, I got recognized in public. We're gonna talk more about that, the channel update, at the end of the video. Yeah, I literally got recognized for being a YouTuber. I have to be the first YouTuber that got recognized before hitting 100,000. That is insane. I also got recognized the day after I recorded this video, because I went to Universal Studios, and I got recognized twice there. But I took a picture with one kid and his dad. Very nice people. If you guys are watching this, please send me that image on Instagram. I just think it was a really sweet moment. But yeah, it's just weird. I don't know why I'm getting recognized, bro. I'm not that. I'm not famous at all. <laughs> Alright, now let's actually get into the real video. If we're gonna talk about Sky does Minecraft, first we have to identify who he is. Who is Sky? By the way, all my sources will be linked down in the description, just like always. With a peak of 12 million subscribers, Sky does Minecraft was the 18th most subscribed YouTube channel and one of the most subscribed gaming channels on YouTube, peaking as the second most subscribed gaming channel just behind PewDiePie in 2014 and 2015, and the most subscribed to Minecraft channel at the time. Adam Dahlberg, born January 17, 1993, aged Tomorrow. 20. Will Better be known online two. as Sky Does Everything, formerly Sky Does Minecraft, is an American YouTuber, video game commentator, and former animator Day who gained two. prominence for his Minecraft appeal, referring to the Minecraft gold ingate item as butter. Some more butter. Butter, 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 butter. And hating squids in the game. Oh, you, I hate no, you. you didn't. I hate you so much. This is squid abuse. He is currently a musician and goes by the name Net Nobody. Nuh-uh. 
but I mean, if you didn't know who Skyda's Minecraft was, bro, where were you? If I'm being real, I think the way that we all found out about Minecraft was through Sky. If you guys say that you found out about Minecraft through Dream, bro, you are too young to be watching this video. Please click off. But I'm sure we all remember Team Crafted, Bayesian Canadian, Jerome ASF, Deadlocks, Sunday, Husky Mudkips. I remember being in um, elementary school. I was in fifth grade and every Friday, our teacher would let us stay inside during lunch to play iPad games and we would all just play Minecraft on the iPad. It was the demo back in the day. Dude, it was so awesome, man. So now that we got that overview of who Sky Does Minecraft is, let's go back to the beginning. A 15 year old Adam creates his channel on January 20th, 2008 under the name Jin the Demon, where he would upload RuneScape videos. He began running with a series called Forza Lulz, which were based upon characters called Tuna Guy and Salmon Guy. I haven't sold any tuna lately. It really sells them right now. Jerome follows me on Twitter. I better call it my brother Salmon Guy. These two characters were played by Adam's main RuneScape character, which had the username Sky the Kid. Fun fact: that account was made for his sister, but then he took over the account himself. Isn't In these gaming weird? videos, you could definitely tell Adam had a niche for this type of content, as he would have entire storylines for each episode, and it was noticeable how much effort he would put into each video, especially for 2008, when not many creators had even made YouTube a viable career. Cat, Adam yeah. would later begin uploading RSM. You either AKA become a YouTuber or. <laughs> Mind. Finally available on Twitch. Can't make that joke Just again. Sorry, guys. And simulcast your stream on Kick. It's like working two jobs at the same. Gate music videos, branding himself as a self-proclaimed RSMV maker and comedian. He kept these RuneScape videos up. Nah, well, to keep it simple, we're making day one the first day well, after the, the free day. So today is day one. All time came out. Tomorrow is day two. Right. That way that we end on day yeah, seven no, to keep not it clean. Fortnite. We're talking about Minecraft. Now on his Jin the Demon channel, Adam would update his bio to mention Minecraft, a new channel focusing on that game alone. He even promoted his new channel on Jin the Demon with an entire video, leaving the Jin channel to die, and now it's actually deleted with only archives existing. On March 5th, 2011, Adam uploads his first video onto the Sky Does Minecraft channel. This video was the beginning of his Minecraft Let's Play series. You can get Minecraft for um, only $20. On Minecraft.net. He begins steadily growing, you know, nothing too crazy, but <clears throat> wow. But there was some growth there. As the wave of Minecraft started taking over, it brought Sky with it. Like I was saying in the intro of this video, you couldn't go a day without mentioning Minecraft and Sky does Minecraft together. Wow, I said Minecraft a lot. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is with the rise of Minecraft, Sky tagged along. Sky would upload videos collaborating with other people, but mainly his girlfriend at the time, named Donovals. A year later, his channel was at 14,000 uh -oh. subscribers. Now, that might seem slow to some people, like a year and you're barely at 14K, but trust me, from firsthand experience of growing slow back in the day, because now it's a blessing that we're growing fast, but my first 14K, I think it actually took more than a year, not to drag myself into this. You know, this video is about Sky, not me. All I'm saying is don't look down upon uh, the slow growth because, honest to God, that is an achievement. Sky would make his first IRL video with the R word challenge, where he would combine a bunch of the popular challenges at the time. This video actually performed better than most of his Let's Play videos, probably due to the fact that I'm pretty sure that was his face reveal. So everyone, you know, more intrigued. There's not really much more to say about that. If there's a dude that hasn't shown his face and he shows his face, you're going to click on it. The blow up. In the summer of 2012, specifically July to August, Adam would go from 20,000 subscribers to 200,000 subscribers. In the midst of that, he uploaded his 100,000 subscriber special where his friends congratulated him. Hey Sky, Minecraft Universe here, and congratulations on 100,000 subscribers. That is a whole lot. That's a one in five big ol' fat zeros. That's a lot of people. But you deserve it, and you make great videos and mod reviews. Your mod reviews are so funny, and everyone loves them. So continue to do those, and don't you ever quit YouTube. Oh, well that didn't age well. Actually, I take that statement back. You'll see later in the video. And just two months after that 100k video, Sky was already at 300. Uh, I don't know what to call them, Hosteza. And two months after that, in December of 2012, he was at 600,000 subscribers. Talk about insane growth. This dude was doing it before everyone else. Sky's fans loved him simply for who he was. Refer back to our Tabuscus video. People loved these guys because they were fun, goofy personalities that entertained us when we were just kids. Though Tabuscus was more of a character, Sky was real. And in my opinion, I'll take a real funny person over a character. Only one month after hitting 600,000, Sky was already at 1 million subscribers in January of 2013. 2013 Lightwork. will be Sky's best year yet, with him starting at 1 mil and ending with 7 million subscribers and even being invited to a panel in minecon 2013 he was gaining anywhere from 100 to 150 million views per month and his daily minecraft videos were easily 
getting over 1 million views with some even surpassing the 10 million mark. It really did seem like nothing could go wrong for Adam. A bump in the road. Sky and Donables ended their relationship while engaged in 2013. Sky would later go live on Periscope, which is Twitter's old live streaming service, and say that he actually paid Don $25,000, bought her a car just for her to stay with him. Now, I'm just gonna go out full 100% clarity. Bro. I did Don dirty. I was a, I was a stupid kid who was receiving a lot of money and I didn't want the money to go away. I paid her 25 grand, I gave her a car, and I basically had her delete her social media. So he's basically bribing this girl, like, yo, please stay with me. And he paid her $25,000 just for this girl to stay with him in the relationship. Yeah, that's Holy obviously shit. not something i don't know how to say a normal person would do no that, that that's rude that's something that someone that's not in the right mental state would do i'm letting you guys know if you guys need to pay someone for them to stay with you drop them all right they're not worth it you're worth more than that you don't gotta pay people to hang out with you in case any of you guys become future millionaires and people just want you for your money just be aware that there's some people that are like that the breakup did not stop the rise of the channel though as i was saying we we're talking about 2013 his peak year like i said in the last clip i'm pretty sure i said it seemed like nothing could go wrong for adam and it, i mean up until this point i guess nothing did go wrong we're talking about his dating life now which we're gonna separate those two topics we're talking about dating life as for the youtube career it's not slowing down at all in 2013. new love after the breakup adam would find himself dating a new girl this girl was named alicia and knew adam since high school on february 3rd 2015 adam and alicia announced their marriage on his channel and shortly after announced that they actually had a baby boy on the way so since we're talking about 2015 now let's talk about the growth of his channel, which the growth of his channel actually slowed down in 2015. I mean, that makes sense. He peaked in 2013. He was still gaining a crazy amount, don't get me wrong, but nothing close to his peak. And then, Mason Dahlberg was born on September 3rd, 2015. 2016, the fall of Skyda's Minecraft. In 2016, Switch to the Google Fi Wireless Flexible Plan and only pay for the data you use. You get four lines with unlimited... Many viewers yes, noticed bingo. that Sky's videos seemed forced and not as genuine as they once used to be. I mean, honestly, that makes sense. The man had been playing the same game for five years straight. Imagine if you guys had to play the same game for five years plus just to keep your YouTube audience happy. Also, it didn't help that Minecraft was just dying in general. By mid-2016, Sky reached 12 million subscribers. I'm awestruck. I mean, 12 million recruits is just a number I never thought. I would ever hit, ever. Like, And between you and me, this thank you just seems, well, he doesn't seem happy. 27 days after that video, Adam announced that he was quitting Minecraft. More specifically, Sky does Minecraft. Following this announcement, Adam lost 100,000 subscribers insanely quick in just four days. Adam uploaded a video one month later where he announced that he was going to start cussing in his videos again. Though, the Minecraft videos didn't stop coming. He probably realized that if his videos weren't about Minecraft, they didn't get the same support. Sadly, the damage had already been done, and his channel continued downhill even while uploading Minecraft videos. So really quickly, I want to talk about the 2017 drama with KSI. This drama is the last I really heard about um, Skydust Minecraft. It's probably the last you guys heard too. But let me take you guys back. Back in 2017, when beefs weren't settled in a boxing match. Instead, they were settled on the internet with diss tracks. I don't exactly remember how this beef initially started, but that doesn't matter. We need to talk about the damage this did to Adam's reputation and to Adam's mental health. So when JJ, aka KSI, made his diss track on Skyda's Minecraft, he actually brought up Elisa. Elisa's actually in the video. And at this point in time, Sky and Elisa were not together. As we're gonna talk about later, he reveals that she actually cheated on him with seven guys. Yes, seven guys, bro. Obviously, Skyda's Minecraft's mental health was off the grid. I mean, he has a kid with this woman. And now JJ's, dude, I love JJ. But what he said in this diss track was crazy. He brought up that Adam would cut himself. Tell me what the fuck you're cutting yourself. How you gonna be a dad when you're cutting yourself? But it's not all you're doing. You fucked up. Where did JJ get that info from? You know, obviously. Bro, what, dude, dude? 2017 YouTube was a war zone, bro. That shit would not fly. <laughs> Holy shit. Got that information from Elisa. Imagine the woman you once loved telling your enemy all your deepest, darkest secrets and then your enemy publicizing that on a dish. Listen, I'm gonna be real with you. It'd be over for me. If I if I married a woman, had a kid with her, she cheated on me with seven different men, then helped in a diss track against someone I didn't like, talking about my insecurities in my private life while flaunting my, the girl that cheated on me, dude, at... 
dude, listen. Trigger warning. Um, it would not end well for me, dude. You gotta, holy shit, man. And everyone laughing at you. And you know, Adam tried making some diss tracks of himself, which I actually liked. They were pretty decent. For fucking how long publicity for new songs, attacking all your homies, cause you know your fucking songs bomb. Then later he went on drama alert and he's having a mental breakdown, talking about, you guys will see. Like, this, this may be fucking jokes to you, JJ. But this is my son. This is my legacy. This is my family. I don't know what the fuck her problem is. I don't know why the fuck she hates me so much. I did so much for her. I paid her through beauty school. I just wanted her to succeed in life, even when she was at her lowest. And not even in KSI's track. I don't care. That shit was fire, man. Like, that was good. Good job. That was dope. You killed it. The bars were crazy. But at the end of the day, man, I'm not upset at you. I'm upset at her for continuing to ruin my life when I haven't done anything to her. I have nothing to lose because the only thing that I want is my son. I gave up my channel. I gave up everything. I gave up my income. I don't care about it anymore. I just want my son. I just want my son. How many YouTubers did she try to hook up with when you were together? Four, five. How many yeah. friends? So there's literally seven people while you were together. Obviously, Adam was not in the right mental state. So all the things that were happening to him were just, I honestly feel bad. I honestly feel so bad. All right, now that we talked about that, I want to talk about what caused- What that. happened? What do you mean, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? And honestly- Armin, imagine- you spend years of your life with a singular woman. You have a child and you build a family with that woman. She cheats on you with two of your friends and five other guys that you don't know. While you're married and have a child. And then during the divorce, you lose your son. Modern dating, this was six years ago. To sum it up, it's mental health. And Sorry, I'm no seven. Way saying that Adam should have ignored his mental health in order to keep his YouTube channel alive. At the end of the day, you should just care about your mental health, not your stats or your channel, you know? So, in case you guys don't know this YouTuber, his name is Sunny V2. He made an amazing video about Skyda's Minecraft. And Sunny V2, actually, I'm pretty sure he watches some of my videos because he commented on the EDP video. So, shout out Sunny V2, bro. I rock with your videos. But Sunny V2 did get a lot of dislikes and a lot of comments telling him that he seemed very rude talking about Adam's mental health. Because in the video, Sunny V2 makes Adam's mental health seem like an Very well, six years phase. nothing, bro. Six years ago is dinosaur age, okay? We're in the new generation, Uncouth, okay? Fucking one tomorrow yesterday's trends are gone okay which no he was going through tough times he went from this super happy no she cheated she cheated encouraging high self-esteem dude with the world at his fingertips to an internet sad boy who seemingly needed his audience to validate his mopey feelings all the time. This video, like his previous update videos, began with talking about how depressed he was and how hard his life was. Bro, imagine how bad she must feel. What do you mean how bad she must feel? She was the winner in this situation. I'm depressed all the time. Again, signing off the video with how he wanted to be real with his audience about what she was probably going doesn't give a shit care about how depressed he was. It's a burden to know about that. It's uncomfortable to have someone tell you how depressed they are. And the goal of YouTube is to make your audience feel comfortable, not uncomfortable. Like I said, I rock with you, Sonny, but I don't really agree with how you described his mental health. And obviously not a lot of other people did too. Sonny goes on to say that what ruined his 13 what ruined Sky does Can I get to 13 end months. Minecraft's career. It Pog, thank you for the 13 months, Typhoon. And it's like, bro, chill. That's not the reason his career went downhill. So we're going to go with my list of reasons I think Sky's career went downhill. So like I said, mental health. That's the main reason. But if we want to talk about those each scenarios, well, let's talk about it right now. So in a video with Anthony Padilla that Sky was recently in, he says that the business got too big and he just simply didn't want to be a part of it anymore. I quit Minecraft because I made a business. I made a business and it got to the point where... 
the business got so big. I love you. You give me some confidence. Responsibility. He also goes on to say that he drank a lot. <laughs> My lowest low was <laughs> probably like I drank a lot, and it would make me really sad and depressed. Do you feel like that he was kind literally said, "Dude, he sounds. He literally sounds chronically online." <laughs> He like he has like the chronically online gamer speech, dude. I love you. you give me confidence. I'm glad, Devil Man. No one responded to my con con comment over one of followers. Chat's dead as fuck right now. I've been live 35 Through hours in your videos at that time. I always yeah, read chat could, though. Like, you could kind of tell that I started getting like exhausted. There's just like this like tiredness to like how the content got going on to what i was saying before let's talk about depression adam had said before in a lot of videos a lot of up holy shit it's six in the morning depression. there's not really much to explain about this one we're all human we oh all go fuck i have to pay lives, my energy but... bill hold on yo everyone pause i have to go pay the bill yo everyone everyone pause where's my where's my where's my where are my cards It left him and got the kid. Yeah, Kai lost. <laughs> dude, dude, it, dude, my, listen, dude, I ain't no pussy, but dude, the fact that he, the fact that he is, the fact that he exists as a person still after that, man, dude. Listen, man, that's some resilience, okay? That's. That's some next level resilience, okay? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh, God damn, bro. Uh... My energy bill is due right now. This get joint custody. I don't know. We don't have any details about that. And it's also not really any of our business, but based off of his reaction, uh, it is less than likely. We three months Woo! somehow. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Uh, my energy bill wasn't that bad this month. Uh, well, okay. Hold on. Yo, everyone, everyone pause for a second. How much do you guys Adam pay Zing for electricity? Right in front of him, and he had no idea how to bring it back. Another reason, Minecraft was just dying. How much do you guys pay for and your for electricity? For a guy named Sky does Minecraft, this didn't look good at all. Another thing, his wife cheated on him, and then they got back together, and she cheated again. But this time with seven different guys. Dude. Well, if you do, you charge your car at home. Listen, some people don't deserve a second chance, man. Okay, yeah, that's why yours is notably higher. I pay about 300 a month charging. Now that I don't live with my parents anymore, I pay about 300 a month in charging, maybe 200. Uh, my electricity bill was only $133 this month. Dude, <laughs> and Skype. As an I, okay. Listen, sometimes, sometimes, dude, sometimes, it comes to a point where you need to realize that there are actions to your consequences. Okay. If there is, if there is a pattern, and you've never seen the pattern being broke, you need to assume the pattern will continue. Did I say actions to your consequences? I'm so tired. There are consequences to your actions. Oh, Greenville? Oh, wow. That's really cheap then, actually. Claims that five of those were YouTubers and two of those were friends. Now I want to talk about... <laughs> 
Where is Adam now? Adam in 2021. So Adam moved over to music. Like he shifted completely over to music. Though he still uploads on the Skydas Minecraft channel, it seems like he's coming back to it, but the views aren't, you know, you, you can't expect millions of views like back in the day. On the Anthony Padilla interview, he says that he has a lot of music, but he just hasn't put any of it out. He says that the music will come out in three months. How do you continue to plan evolving on and off YouTube? One day at a time. In about three months, expect some music. In about... Wait, he's still po he's posting. I just took a mood aroused gummy. No, I just took a mood bedtime gummy. No, how long does it take to kick in? Well, take care of myself. With over 25,000 five It's finally happened. It's finally happened. But by force because of the leakers. <clears throat> How many views does he get? I just I just don't want him to be broke, you know? Like that's what scares me. Like what if he's broke? Sky does shorts. Uh-oh. Oh, his channel's really dead. That's kind of scary. How can you make two and a half, two point one thousand videos, have a video with almost a hundred million views, and heartily break? I feel like this is not actually hide and seek, rather than this is just twenty minutes of sexual. Half on windows. I thought it was five minutes of standing. That's what this game is. No, it's I'm yeah, so that is. Extremely hard. If you're good, if you're good enough to stand for five minutes, are you man enough good. to stand still and do nothing? <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, yeah, that that I infomercial for this game. This yeah. summer, standing still has never been so intense. <laughs> Basherverse, XRPM X13, Log.zip, <laughs> and Beijing Canadian in stand. <laughs> Starring wooden block, crafting bench, and anvil. And plastic funnel. Plastic funnel. I remember lie. this guy. He still makes videos. And he actually kind of gets views? How can you make Minecraft videos for that long? Oh, he gets big views. Oh, no, he makes shorts now. Oh, wait. He gets lots of views still. Huh. But his channel's so much smaller, but he still gets gross amounts of views. I want to know how many views Sky got in his peak. How much? How many monthly views was he getting at his peak if this guy was getting 50 million just a year ago? Does anyone know? Is there a way to check? You can't go back past a year anymore or two years. I remember I stopped watching this guy uh, at one point because... Um, I think he, like, jokingly said a curse word. And for, like, until I was, like, probably 14, I was... Dude, I aged so slow when I was younger. I was, like, horrified that my parents, if I cursed that or watched a YouTube video that had a curse word in it, I would, I would get in huge trouble. About three months, you're dropping it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can't wait to hear that, honestly. He, he's a really good artist. On his Net Nobody Records channel, he that's where, you know, he uploads his music. He doesn't need Minecraft to uphold him. He said that in the interview. He said that it always feels like Minecraft is going to be a shadow. There's this huge shadow I have to, like, overcome of, like, Minecraft now with all my music. 
and yeah. so it leaves me like I'll never be good enough. That's a horrible feeling. That that that, that can't be. That can't feel good at all. If there's one thing I do want to know about that Anthony Padilla interview, it's that Sky seems so much happier. I don't know if he was playing it for the cameras. I hope he wasn't. But genuinely, Adam seems so much happier. And I hope he's I dude. Hope he's good. I have a good feeling. I hope he's good. Apparently, aging slowly did me dirty because I'm basically a sex that. worker now. Yeah, Who's... that's where we are so far in 2021. Oh, I very man. quickly want to explain how Sky actually ended up getting custody of his son. Now, I was always oh, confused. Did. Finally. Wait, why are people saying that this diss track was the reason he got his son back? Because, you know, that just sounds weird, right? You, you made a diss track and then you got your son back? What does that mean? Thankfully, this comment comment helped me understand all of it. Adam called out KSI on Twitter just to rile him up. Then Adam made a diss track on KSI, knowing that KSI would make a diss track back. But Adam also knew that KSI would fly out his baby mama. How he knew that, I don't know. I guess people knew KSI was a dirty guy back in the day. <laughs> and Adam also knew that Elisa would leak a bunch of personal information to KSI for him to use in the diss track. So once KSI's diss track came out and KSI publicized all the personal stuff that Elisa had told him, Adam then made another diss track and that diss track, it had been in the works. So he released it the same day as the KSI diss track. And at the end of the video, Adam explains that everything Elisa told KSI is now being sent to lawyers and being used as slander. It actually ended up working. He used that in court and ended up winning custody over his son because I'm guessing the judge was like, bro, what the fuck? Why are you leaking this private info to a guy from the UK? Holy for big, song? So yeah, holy big, big, big Adam, brain. Bro. Holy All right, shit. Now let's head on over to the channel update. Whew. All right, guys, shameless plug. Want to make the switch to Shopify? Here. Holy shit. God, I just want to come in your ass, daddy. Okay, bye guys. I'm going to go take a nappy nap. You see you got the kid? Yeah. Is it time to take a nappy and go to bed? A silly little, a silly little bedtime sleep. Here's how to do it in a few easy steps. Sign up for a free trial at Shopify.com and download one of our top rated migration apps from the Shopify app store. All of your important content and data, we're talking products, customers, order history, blogs huh. will be imported into your Shopify store. You're probably thinking, okay, now I have to redesign my store. Shopify has tons of customizable, no-code themes that let you express your brand your way. Then it's on to selecting shipping Let me put my camera up. And setting up Shopify payments so you can get paid. All right, now the only thing left to do is connect your domain and launch your store. Yeah, you'll get used to that. With powerful tools, world-class support, and the best converting checkout on the internet, Shopify can help you grow your business into a global empire. Make the switch and see for yourself. Start your free trial today. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Go buy the merch. You see that? I got Earl um, right here. What the, the shit, logo. you Go guys? Buy the merch if you want to. What I the you shit, you guys? Go follow me on Instagram. I up, I update you guys for everything over there. I told you guys on Instagram that I'm gonna have new merch designs for 100k. Also, a Discord server coming at 100k. So be ready for that. Almost at 65,000 by the time this video comes out. Probably at 65k. Also, let me know right now if I should make Basherverse, the tragic fall of Basherverse, because as we all know, Basher also had a mental breakdown. I did kind of watch Basher more than I watched Sky. So I think it would be a dope video. If you guys want to see another other video just like this but about Basherverse, let me know down in the comments if you guys want to support the channel you guys can join their membership and it's just one dollar or a dollar on nine and you guys support me enough and i give you guys sneak peeks to next videos on the community tab that only you guys can see also i want to talk about me getting recognized yesterday so yesterday 
I was at a thrift store. I live in California, by the way. So if you guys live in California, then uh, you got a chance of meeting the, the King Tug. Dude, there's a fly in my room. Get out of here. I don't even know. I'm not going to get into too many details because it was a special moment that I want to keep to myself. But basically, I can't believe I met a subscriber, bro. Like, that's crazy. Like, the is the channel growing that fast? Like, I know the channel's growing fast, but that fast, bro? That's a blessing, bro. Like, like meeting that person really made me feel like damn i want to do this for the rest of my life i could tell he was definitely alternative and i love that but like he just looks like a cool person or i don't know their pronouns but i'm, I'm gonna say they just look like a cool person did i get it fuck I'm trying to get that fly bro but yeah and it's like i would love to get to meet a, a lot more of you reminder that i have a mullet oh yeah i have a little black spot right there it's because of my hair dye <laughs> but yeah i would love to get to meet a lot more of you and that's what i want to do with the channel like i want to let like alt kids like alternative kids like kids that look like like me basically like piercings dye your hair not afraid to be yourself i want to let you guys know that you can be yourself you don't have to be you don't have to fit in you don't have to be fucking an average joe you don't have to be normal oh that sounds so edgy right you don't have to be normal but i'm serious bro i want to let kids that look like me know like you can you can be happy doing what you want you don't need others approval you can do whatever you want and you can succeed in it all right i'm getting carried away bro go subscribe to my second channel i'm gonna upload a mullet tutorial later so i love you guys so much and i will see you guys next time i have is such a like cool guy just very wholesome so tomorrow is my first day of high school. Okay, well, we'll skip that one. <laughs> that one's probably a little bit boring. Where is the timer at, though? All right, so as you read in the title of the video, I pretended to be a girl. Yeah, um, I guess doing that on Instagram wasn't enough for me. <laughs> I've seen videos of people doing this, but they all use that Snapchat filter, which isn't that realistic. I decided to use FaceApp. You don't Switch to I Google do that Fi every day, bro. And get our premium unlimited phone plan, unlimited Pop plus. Off, man. Keep your whole family connected with features like high-speed hotspot tethering and international data in 200 plus this destinations. Would be wishing was me. It even comes with one year of YouTube premium on us. Hell so you can yeah, enjoy brother! Your favorite videos and music ad-free. Plus, enjoy full connectivity for select smartwatches. Hell yeah, brother! Get that time was way too big. A month. Join unlimited plus from Google Fi Wireless. Switch today. Oh, I'll be sleeping through the most of the timer. I'm about to tell you why I genuinely thought I was going to be in Mr. Beast's new video. But, obviously, I wasn't. So, take this as a side. Okay, where? Oh, my God. Wow. Where? All right. So, as you read in the title of the video, I pretended um... to be a girl. Yeah. Um, I guess doing that on Instagram wasn't enough for me. <laughs> I've seen... Let's... Oh, my God. Thank you for the five gifted. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is there, like, no way to play from, like, most popular? Well, well... I love being a YouTuber, but we don't really have the best reputation when it comes to allegations or... The streaming world is marking its place on becoming one of the most polarizing spaces in the entertainment industry. We all have our favorite streamers, and if we don't catch them live, well, surely they have a YouTube channel where they post their clips and let us see what they're up to. Even though it seems like the easiest job in the world, I mean, who wouldn't want to react to some clips, play video games, grow a community, all while getting paid? Well, the success stories that we see are only the top percent. Some streamers just couldn't fake it till you make it, and ended up ruining their entire lives. We've spoken about streamers' careers being ruined before, but today, we're going a tier below that welcome to streamers who ruin their lives in seconds hitochi yuki i'm Hitoshi. actually kind of curious about Smash watching this video XXX. real name hitochi yuki had a career as a streamer and did what your regular streamer would do you know fire up the cameras talk about random things and okay i'm gonna go to bed i'm gonna go brush my teeth and go to bed actually going well for him his just mm -hmm. chatting mm -hmm. style and irl vlogs garnered him about 11,000 subscribers on twitch where he would occasionally feature his girlfriend jess one day in march of 2021 smash god and his girlfriend were live and they were just doing the usual chilling he's vaping and jess is on her phone scrolling and typing but then they start arguing and suddenly things take a very wild turn see he wanted to get jess out of the room because he wanted to talk just to the chat for a moment just get out i'll open the door for you jess please please leave my stream and me alone get out please why are you talking about me now no i'm not but i need to talk to chat if i were you just be curious if i want to keep 
Just please. Why are you acting like that? Why are you acting like that, bro? Don't come at me like you know everything. I don't know shit. Exactly, so keep your mouth shut. He persuades her to leave, saying, yo, get out of here for a second. I need to talk to the chat just without you. Just, just get out. I'll open the door for you. Please, please leave my stream and me alone. Now, it seems Jess didn't want to leave because she just sits there ignoring him. He gets annoyed and presses on, even saying, bring me my beer. My beer is right there in the living room, actually. And pausing there for just a moment, that's a really gross thing, I feel like, to say during an argument. It almost has the vibe of, like, women belong in the kitchen. Go get me my beer. Go get me my insert food item here. Just has those vibes. Jess, maybe realizing this response, I'm not your fucking maid. Now, this is when things turn even nastier because Smash God then stands up, turns the camera camera away from both of them and we can hear a loud slap in the background. The dude seemingly smacked his girlfriend live on stream. It happens within just a few seconds but those seconds were enough to get him in big trouble which he clearly didn't anticipate at the time. The stream cut off and his sister took the camera but the duo returned after a while. They try to act like nothing happened. 99% sure she was being forced to say it was okay. However, the chat wasn't buying it. Jess attempted to downplay the situation, but people still got riled up. It got worse from there as he attempted shifting the blame to her. He can be heard saying, obviously, me and my girls here together, all good and shit. You caused this. It's, it's kind of your fault. You can't say it's mine. I just try to chill. Obviously, me and my girls over here together, all good and shit. Easier said than done, huh? Yeah, yeah. Let's get a pop. It's kind of like that. Can't say it's mine. I just try to chill. Classic manipulation tactic, the good old deflect. The dude allegedly inflicted harm on his partner, then goes ahead and blames her for it. And people saw right through that and decided to give him a piece of their minds. On this YouTube video that has been viewed over 2.7 million times, you can see comments like, if he's bold enough to act like this in front of his fans, then imagine what happens when he's off stream. 314 made my blood boil. The fact that he blames this whole situation on her is awful. Anyway, Smash God's free fall doesn't stop there. He actually doubled down. Facing backlash from Reddit and Twitter, he decided to scare people off. First, he tried to get his chat to downvote this Reddit post that captured the entire situation. Then, in a classic internet fail, he tried to send a cease and desist letter to anyone who talked about the situation. He got roasted for the letter's authenticity in return. After all that, he got banned from Twitch and tried appealing but I believe he never got accepted back. For most of his fans, which I'm gonna assume they're not fans anymore, that stream is the last time they ever heard from Smash God. Looking up Smash God on Google or YouTube leads to that event and that event only. I couldn't find his social media links, though those are probably just taken down as well, but this is what he's gonna be known for for the rest of his life. Good riddance. Stefan McCullough, aka Boat Saxon 07. Picture this. Stefan is a normal streamer. He puts in the work, you know, as great streamers do. He's a gamer and he loves streaming GTA. Then in August of 2022, things are actually still going great. And Steve, we're gonna call him Steve now, even officially brings a girl into his life, Natalie McNally. So he's doing his streaming thing. He has his girlfriend, and to make it even better, they have a baby on the way. Natalie, who was 32 at the time, was pregnant with Steve's child, and their parents knew about it. Now, I wish the story's ending was that they had a beautiful child and lived happily ever after, but sadly, that's not the case. A few weeks later, things turned really ugly. On the 18th of December, Natalie lost her life in a very cruel way. Earlier that day, she had been at her parents' home in Lurgan, Northern Ireland, hanging out with them, watching the World Cup finals. She then left and arrived at her home in Silverwood, Lurgan, at 7 p.m. as per CC. CCTV footage. At 8.52 p.m. that same night, the CCTV captures a man arriving at the same address and leaving at 9.30 p.m. It would later turn out that this is the time frame within which Natalie, who had been 15 weeks pregnant, was fatally stabbed. Now you're probably wondering where Steve features in this story. Well, he was up to some very suspicious stuff. First, just before Natalie left her parents' home, Steve texted her that he would be live streaming GTA from 6 p.m. and probably through the night. He had planned that live stream in advance and even promoted it on his Twitter with a custom-made poster, which read, festive steamy goodness live so he was live streaming while his girlfriend got murdered absolutely not this dude set up a pre-recorded six hour long gta live stream he used this to use as an alibi because he murdered his pregnant girlfriend going back to the live stream he pre-recorded it a week before and mentioned in there how he was having a difficulty with the chat obviously so he wouldn't have to respond to the live chats and said that he put away his phone so what are we doing tonight well because this streaming software is kind of up the left it means I can't check the live chat. 
which is a real shame. So by all means, talk amongst yourselves. I could use my phone to dip in every now and again and uh, check it, but I've decided that I kind of hate live streams where people just sit and read comments and go, oh my God, yes, ask me questions, better. Um, and also, if I go on my phone for too long, I'll end up just scrolling through TikTok and the amount of time that I've lost scrolling through TikTok is unbelievable. So yeah, phones away. Can't look at the live chat for some bloody reason because if I do, it makes it, the whole thing freeze and OBS just screws up. Right, yeah, so um, I need to get my anxiety about whether or not this stream will crash just out of the way, otherwise it'll affect the whole bloody thing. But yes, um, if you have questions, comments, opinions, anything like that, pop. <laughs> what, what I want this to be, right, is, do you know like when you used to watch Big Brother back in the day? When like E4 had like a, a live stream that ran like all night and it was just live footage from the house? It's kind of going to be like that. So, you know, like you can dip in, you can dip out, that sort of thing. And meanwhile, I'm just going to be focusing on playing the game. All good? All good. The fake live stream titled Violent Night Christmas Live Gaming Stream went on for about six hours. Where was Steve from 6 p.m. to midnight? Well, committing the murder. But how was he caught? Thanks to extensive CCTV footage, detectives were able to piece together his movements. They saw a man, the man in the CCTV, walk down to a bus stop that's near Steve's home at around 7.09 p.m. disguised in a large hood, a snood, and gloves. The man takes a bus, pays cash, but then drops some coins that he's unable to pick due to the thick gloves. He pulls the gloves off to reveal yellow-orange gloves underneath. He alights at Lurgan and the cameras capture him entering Natalie's residence. Neighbors heard a woman screaming during this time. He's captured again leaving with a backpack, having changed clothing, but still disguised. He then takes a taxi that drops him at a home address, his home address, where he comes in and comes back out to pay for the taxi. Then, minutes later, Steve's phone becomes active after being off for hours. Oh, and Natalie's German Shepherd never attacked or barked at this man, obviously because the dog already knew him. So, piecing it all together, coupled with intensive forensic evidence on the latex gloves amongst other things, detectives were certain that the man in the CCTV was Steve. They believe that Steve killed Natalie because he found 33 WhatsApp messages with another male on her phone. There was a lot of other damage evidence against him including shared passwords, his access to her phone, browsing history, hints on the live stream, etc. But it was the discovery of the fake stream that prompted him to issue a pre-prepared statement. Were it not for the evidence, he might have actually walked away with it. And I think for a moment he actually thought he got away with it. He went to her wake, he mourned with her family, and attended a rally in her name for support of ending violence against women. Anyway, that was the last of Steve's streams as he'll be going away for good as his sentencing is due this month. Joshua Block, aka World of T-Shirts. Well-known influencer World of T-Shirts spends a lot of time live streaming and getting drunk. He's a tour guide and does so for the East Village and North Brooklyn areas. He does what most influencers do, entertain the masses on social media. He used to be pretty good at what he did and amass quite a fan base. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? National Coffee Day. His TikTok sits at 2.5 million followers and has over 197 million likes. He also has an Instagram that has over 80,000 followers. People really seem to like this guy as his comments used to be full of support. So glad you're on vacation, Josh. You deserved one. Josh, where is your next adventure? We love that you take us with you. No need for us to go on vacation now. Thanks. But while some think Josh is just living his best life, some people who have been his keen followers from back in the day insist that he's on a downward spiral, sort of like his career and life are headed for the pits. How so? Well, using this TikTok by Noah Glenn Carter as an example, it seems there has been a massive shift in Josh's content, especially after his arrival in New York. While originally back in 2020, he would share clips of him reviewing coffee drinks and other likable stuff, since he got to New York City, he has posted thousands of videos of him wandering around and he's almost always drinking. And I'm not talking about coffee, like here, here, and here. Actually, fans notice the change in beverage choices and comments like, I really wonder how much Josh spends on alcohol a year. Why is he flexing his alcoholism? The guy knows he's done for, begin to appear in his videos. Also, allegedly, from this comment here, he used to live with his grandparents who wanted him to get treatment for alcoholism, but he refused and that's why he's been rolling solo for a while now. Again, allegedly. Actually, not completely solo, because he's been featuring a guy named Michael Quinn in a lot of his videos, and fans believe that Quinn is a bad influence. You can see in this clip, for example, Josh is discussing almost proudly with Quinn how he vomited all over the place when they were both at the bar. Very quickly, likable Josh turned into unpredictable Josh. Well, Rock discusses drink, vomiting drink, all over bars of the Michael Quinn. Watch. You know beauty bar in the East Village? Yeah. I puked all over the place and ran out. 
before the bartender came back. I was with Gwen when that happened. And I puked my drink, and then I drank it. You saw that? I did see that. That's what happened. I love you. Thanks. God bless you. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> she just kissed me. She just, she just fucking kissed me. She just kissed me. What the fuck? I'm gonna fucking report her. She just fucking kissed me. I'm gonna report her. <laughs> she just kissed a stranger. <laughs> And that brings us to his issues, or rather, controversies. In a video, this one here, Josh was filmed stomping on a fish, which he later claimed was dead, and that he was set up. Apparently, the person was not supposed to film him doing it. Some people, of course, took offense to this despite his explanations. In that clip also, you can see that he's holding alcohol. And this relationship he has with alcohol seems to be a source of other mishaps. For instance, how he has been accused of saying racial slurs. Anyway, based on the information going around, we might be witnessing a man losing his career and or life in a rather terrible way. From what I've seen, many people have reached out to help, but to no avail. I hope this man gets the help he needs because he's obviously going through something and drinking seems to be his coping mechanism. Josh, if you're seeing this, please get help. You seem to have a community that really cares about you. Joe Ortega, aka Joe Daddy underscore 505. Next up is a guy who just like Smash God, left his camera on, revealing his ugly side. Known to his fans as Joe Daddy 505, this guy did one of the dumbest things on camera and it cost him his entire career. This happened back in 2016 when Joe was heard assaulting his girlfriend live on stream. In the extensive clip that goes on for about 5 minutes, you can hear the girlfriend screaming and crying and there's a commotion that sounds like a physical altercation. I'm not going to share the clip here due to its sensitive nature, it turns out, as reported by the Daily Mail that Joe had both physically and sexually assaulted the woman. As more details were revealed, it became clear that he had been playing NBA 2K16 on his PlayStation 4, and after the stream ended, he forgot to turn off his audio, hence capturing the incident. It's unclear, however, what the argument was about, but I don't think that matters. For the most part, it sounds like the woman is trying to defend herself, even saying, get off of me, as Joe keeps shouting profanities at her. She can also be heard saying that she was going to call the police, and Joe's response is, some vulgarity I'm not going to include in this video. At some point, the woman seems to shout, you're me, and at no point does the argument calm down. He was really bent on attacking her the whole time, and I can't even count how many times he used the word whore. I actually went through the transcribed version of the conversation on Reddit, and interestingly, at one point he says, what'd you say to your doctor, bruh? Which I have no context for. But then at some other point, he accuses her of having sex with a lot of people. Soon after, the internet found out, and what can I say? No one was a fan of this dude. Now, you would think that Joe was arrested, right? Well, wrong. The police, Valencia County deputies, said that they wouldn't take action because an audio recording isn't enough evidence. There has to be a victim who comes forward. And so after the incident, Joe went online and made this post trying to blame his actions on alcohol and his father recently passing away. However, no one would hear any of it. He got banned from Twitch and I think realizing he was done for, he deleted his social media accounts. Twitch, when asked about Joe's case by Engadget, said they do not comment on policy violations. They also clarified that if they suspect that a user on the platform is in imminent physical harm or harm to others, they would share such details with law enforcement but only enough information to allow officers to ascertain the threats. Anyway, this was the last that Joe's fans ever heard of him, and it seemed his career and life were ruined due to this event. Aqualadora. Picture this. You're sitting at your desk, watching a random Twitch stream where a host and three guests are discussing their lives and random experiences. The host asks, what's the worst thing you've ever done in your life? A seemingly harmless question, but one of the girls on the stream says that she killed a dog. On purpose. Let's talk about it. Now, on Raji Patel's stream over five years ago, when he hosted Simone Scott, popularly known as Aqua or Aqualadora, and two other gamer girls, Jenna and FT Bella, this caused a lot of commotion. In the stream, Aqua's response to the question was that when she used to work as a veteran veterinary technician, she basically knowingly killed a person's dog. She specifically says, I once killed a person's dog on purpose. Raji and the other guests are stunned by the answer, and he seeks to clarify what she just said by asking, on purpose? She casually says, yeah, but no one knows because, you know, professional. He pushes her to say it was an accident, but the words were already out and they would cause a massive stir in the gaming community. And I mean, just any community in general. What about you, Aqua? What's the worst thing that you've ever done to somebody? Cam up in the in the tiny yeah. jet, by the way, when you're in. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's um, well, I used to I used to work as a veterinary technician, so I I uh, once oh. killed someone's dog. Oh, on purpose. And I, I, glow I, on purpose? Yeah, but no one knew because you know. 
Oh my professional, god. Professional. Oh no. Oh my god, that's really bad. I'm gonna pretend like you didn't say that. Um, just say it was.